Hawkeye Sports Vision presents Iowa Hawkeye football. It's the Hawkeyes and the Golden Gophers. Hello, everybody. I'm Bob Healy. With me is Keith Chappelle today. Now, both these teams are headed for bowl games. The Hawkeyes for the Holiday Bowl out in San Diego and, of course, the Golden Gophers for the Liberty Bowl. So now the question is, Keith, how will these two teams perform knowing that they're going somewhere else uh, for the holidays? Well, I think what it's done is really uh, let the players relax a little bit more. All week long, we had a lot of speculation on where each team, respective teams were going, and the coaches knew full well that they need their players' mind concentrating on this upcoming game. The Gophers uh, have always proven uh, more than uh, worthy opponents for the Hawkeyes, and Hayden Fry knows that their single concentration right now has to be here in Minnesota. You have a top-ranked rushing team in the conference in Minnesota, and of course the best defense against the rush in Iowa, so what's going to give? Well, I think what you're going to see is a great matchup here. The Hawkeyes know the, the, the capability of the running quarterback. Uh, Foggy has done superbly against them. But I think what the, the Minnesota is going to have to do to be successful is to sprint outside. The Hawkeyes have a, a formidable front line with Jeff Dross and their linebacking core. And I think you're going to see a lot of sprint out, not only uh, passing, but the sprint out option for Minnesota to make it run. Now, not only will Iowa have to stop uh, Foggy from sprinting out, though, they have one of the outstanding running backs in the conference in the country for that matter in Daryl Thompson, and he is just a freshman. Just a freshman and really has been the surprise in the Big Ten this year. Daryl Thompson really adds to the Minnesota offense what had been lacking. Foggy had always been a great option quarterback, but he never really had anybody to option to, and as the emergence of Daryl Thompson coming in really has made this uh, attack one of the top in the country. Thompson needs just 75 yards to become the all-time leading rusher, single-season rusher in Minnesota history. Now, for Iowa, you have Rick Bayless, who has uh, come up after an injury to Kevin Harmon, and is now a, about ready to join a very elite group at Iowa as, as well, and needs only 38 yards to do it. Well, 38 yards put Rick Bayless in the class of only two other Iowa running backs, Dennis Mollisley and Ronnie Harmon, for going over 1,000 yards in the season, and I, I think he complements Iowa as well as Thompson does Minnesota in the fact that he comes into this game as not only their leading rusher, but their leading receiver as well, and he really makes things happen for these Hawkeyes. I think uh, he's going to have an added incentive in the fact that this is hometown for him, being from Minnesota, and he wants to perform well for the hometown people. And, of course, uh, he's also playing for Floyd of Rosedale, of course, the annual tradition between Iowa and Minnesota. I think Floyd of Rosedale is something that uh, both teams battle off and had a lot of significance in the early years when the teams weren't very well. But now both teams have passed beyond that, and they're playing for a lot bigger stakes than uh, a bronze pig. All right, coming up in just a few moments, we'll have the opening kickoff. It's Iowa and Minnesota right here on Sports Vision. Stay with us. Welcome to Minneapolis, the Hubert H. Humphrey Metrodome, where the Hawkeyes and the Minnesota Golden Gophers will do battle. Hello, everybody. I'm Bob Healy with me. Is Keith Chappelle. Iowa comes into this game with a 7-3 record overall, 4-3 in the Big Ten. Minnesota 6-4, 5-2 in the conference, of course. One of those conference wins, the one last week, a very big one, beating Michigan for the first time at Michigan this year. And the emotional lift that gave the Gophers going into this game it cannot be discounted. They're on cloud nine. Uh, they haven't done that, actually getting a bowl bid, uh, their second consecutive bowl bid. This program feels they have turned around and they are really looking to contend in the coming years, not only for the top division, but for first place in the Big Ten. Marv Cook kicks off for the Hawkeyes. And the Gophers will start with good field position. Mel Anderson bringing it back. And it will be first and 10 at the 38-yard line. Anderson, number 89, the starting split in for the Golden Gophers. Of course, they're led by quarterback Ricky Foggy, who can do it all, run, throw. And then the talented freshman running back, Daryl Thompson. Thompson is in along with Kevin Wilson. Craig Otto in motion. Foggy to pass the first down, and he goes down. John Breeze, Jeff Drost, put the pressure on him, and that Iowa defense sacks Foggy for a loss. We talked about number one against number one, and here you're seeing it very early. Mr. Foggy meets Jeff Drost, the ringleader of the Iowa defense head-on. Jeff Drost, Iowa's preseason All-American. 
senior, 6'5", 286 pounds. A loss of nine yards, second down and 19 now. The ball at the 29. Straight up the middle on second down. Kevin Wilson picks up one, maybe two yards, and that will bring up third and long, third and 14. As you look at that Iowa defense, we said at the, at the top of this game, for Minnesota to become successful, they were going to have to stay away from that heart of that Iowa defense. The defensive front there with Brees and Ross and Dave Haight have been playing superbly. And they're, if they're going to move the football, they're going to have to do it on the outside, attempting to challenge Iowa's defensive end. Third and 14. Little screen pass. And Thompson, Dale Thompson, the freshman, picks up five, maybe six yards out to the 40-yard line. Not enough, though, and Minnesota will have to give it up. Credit Kerry Burt was coming up, making a superb tackle there in the flat on Daryl Thompson. He met him there. Daryl had some running room going, and Kerry Burt came up and made a fine open field tackle on that play. Herbell the punt. Peter Marciano is back deep for the Hawkeyes at about the 20-yard line. And a low lining punt by Herbell. Drives Marciano back. He takes it at about the 12-yard line. Could not stay in bounds, so the Hawkeyes will take over deep in their own territory. Marciano trying to walk the type rope that time. Couldn't quite keep him going out of bounds. Marciano did a good job of feeling this pitch, and there you see him just stepping right on the end line. The referee right on top of it, spot to dead. This puts the ball Iowa back deep in their own territory, starting their initial drive. Had been some question mark this week, questions this week as to who would start a quarterback. Tom Paholski, the redshirt freshman, number 14, will start. Mark Vlasic, the senior, who has been bothered by a shoulder injury. Has not seen any action in the last couple of games. Straight up the middle, Rick Bayless. And Bayless punches out five, maybe six yards. Bayless needs just 38 yards to join an elite group of Iowa running backs in that 1,000-yard club. Donovan Small coming up to make the stop on Bayless. Rick Bayless was the guy that was originally a walk-on. Nobody would have dreamed would have been going for 1,000 yards. Well, no, really, uh, if you look at the players that have made the biggest impact for both the Gophers and the Hawkeyes, they have both been uh, two surprise players. Daryl Thompson coming in as a freshman, leading the Big Ten is totally unheard of. Second and three, he's got Quinn Early downfield, and Early pulls it down and loses the football. Donovan Small comes up with the big play for the Gophers. Early came down with the football, bounced right out of his arms into the hands of Donovan Small. Credit the Iowa, uh, the Minnesota cornerback with coming up with a great play here, sticking with Quinn Early. It was a great throw by Paholski, but watch as we see here. He held up for the ball, but there you see number 45 coming right up with Quinn Early, and as he hits the ground, the ball just pops straight into the air. And there you see Donovan Small recovering it on the fly. Quinn Early was beckoning to the referee as if he had been interfered with, but the referee being right on top of it said it was a fair play and a great break for the Gophers. First and 10 from the 47. Daryl Thompson. That was shades of Ohio State and Iowa just a few weeks ago. Here we see Hayden Fry on the sideline talking to Peter Marciano a little bit about his fielding. Quinn Early coming into your picture. Obviously upset about that, but it was a underthrown ball. Quinn Early had his man beat deep on a post pattern. He had to wait on the ball and it was a good defensive play, not only by the cornerback, but on Donovan Small's part for being in the area to retrieve it. Second down and nine. Boggy rolls right. And it's complete to Mel Anderson. Anderson just shy of the first down. John Gutekunst looking on from the Minnesota sideline in his first year you really can't call it a first year though he coached one game last year when Lou Holtz left to go to Notre Dame he coached the team against Clemson in the Independence Bowl and was 1-0 before his first year even began 
1-0, and a lot of people feel that he's a strong candidate for this year's Big Ten Coach of the Year for the job he's done with the Gophers here in Minnesota, but he's got a great group of talent. Third and two. Boggy will keep it himself. Kerry Burke comes up to make the hit along with Tyrone Taylor. Foggy picks up the first down for Minnesota. And there we see what Foggy does best. Going out on that option, the Hawkeyes are well aware of Daryl Thompson there. There you're going to see a Hawkeye taking Daryl Thompson out, but that leaves Foggy the option to turn it up in two yards with no problem there. Foggy, a junior out of Waterloo, South Carolina, has really been a big impact player for the Minnesota Gophers since his arrival here three years ago. First to 10 from the 41. Fregano in motion. Foggy goes left. And the pitch is fumbled, but out of bounds. So Minnesota holds on to it. In fact, maybe even picks up a yard or two. The ball out of bounds at the 35-yard line. Daryl Thompson, the freshman, handling the ball. That was really a late pitch by Foggy. It really was, because if you see here, Foggy had an opportunity, had he pitched this ball to Daryl Thompson, for Thompson to pick up some substantial yards. But it, he pitched the ball late. Thompson may have been looking a little at Keaton Smiley there right in front of him. And as the pitch was a little high, so it caught him right at eye's level. Not exactly where you want to pitch at that magnitude. And lucky break for the Gophers. Gary Couch is split wide right. Dennis Carter to the left. Otto in motion. Foggy drops back. The screen pass. Ron gets. And some of the Iowa fans looking on a little bit of look of concern on their face as the Gophers are moving the football. Moving the ball well, doing the thing we talked about in the opening that they would have to do on their initial series. They chose to drop back, straight back, Foggy try, attempting to throw a pass, and Jeff Dross nullified that play before it even got started. For them to be successful, they're going to have to mix their plays up and sprint away from the heart of the Iowa defense, and they're doing a good job of it on this series. First and 10 from the 28. Straight up the middle. Gets once again. Another freshman. That is playing well for the Golden Gophers. He'll go out now and a new crop of players checks in for Don Gutekunst. Gets is another one of these freshmen out of Wacon, Minnesota. And you can see there Hayden Fry prancing on the sidelines. They've got to be very concerned. If they do not contain uh, Thompson and Fogey outside, it really opens up the middle for whoever they choose to run on the dive. Foggy has to eat at that time. John Breeze was there along with Hate. The Hawkeyes containing that move by Foggy that time, and that'll bring up third down and three from the 21. The pressure in a Minnesota team like this is really going to be relayed on the Iowa defensive ends and strong safety because it's going to be their responsibility to contain Foggy and allow the, the pressure time to come from the inside out to contain it. So uh, you look at Greer and Mott and Kerry Burke. They've got a, a tough responsibility this game. Couch lines up in the backfield now along with Wilson and Thompson on third and three. And Iowa says they have the football. Fumble. And the Hawkeyes come up with it. Dave Haight. So Iowa will take over. 8.47 left in the first quarter. No score from the Metrodome. Welcome back to the Metrodome in Minneapolis. Bob Beely with Keith Chappelle. The Hawkeyes recover the fumble and take over first and 10 at the 20-yard line. In case you're just joining us, no score in this ball game. Both teams turning the ball over on their first possession. Don Pollard made the stop on Rick Bayless that time. We talk about Rick Bayless and the, the impression that he's made on the Hawkeyes. You look at a, a lot of surprise players when they come into the league. Rick Bayless, a walk-on, Daryl Thompson, a freshman. They come in with a lot less pressure than a lot more of the heralded athletes. So sometimes it's a lot easier to see someone like that come in and make a bigger impact because he doesn't have the pressure. And Rick Bayless is really 
come into his own this year. Second down and seven. And out of the backfield, Paholski was going for Bayless. Overthrown. That'll bring up third down and seven. So far, we have not seen David Hudson in that backfield for Iowa. Richard Bass getting the call at fullback. Tom Paholski, one of four excellent quarterbacks that Hayden Fry has on his team and has used them all this year. Really has. Paholski coming off of last week, which had to have been his best game statistically, threw for well over 200 yards, three touchdowns, and is really coming to his own in his, just his first year of playing service for the Hawkeyes. Third down and seven. Gopher showing blitz and then back off. Handoff is to Bayless. He finds an opening for four or five. It will not be enough for the first down. Larry Joyner, one of the Minnesota linebackers, making the stop. And Iowa will have to give it up once again. And that is what the crowd here at the Metrodome likes to see, some defense. This crowd really gets emotional. And uh, we've got a full house here for the last game for the Gophers. And they really get into this football game. Kostrabala with the punt. Richardson fields it at the 31. Nice little sidestep to pick up five or six yards. Crosses the 40 out to the 42. So, so far, the Gophers have had the field position. The Gophers on the exchanges of downs have really positioned themselves well. They moved the ball well, but came up with uh, the one turnover, the, the fumble down there. And that's the problem when you've got an option team is that you are susceptible to turnovers of that nature. Foggy does a great job of moving the team, but when you're pitching the ball out and holding the ball, if you ever watch the running style of Ricky Foggy, he runs with the ball like a loaf of bread, not what you would have <laughs> your running backs, not what you would teach them, but that's just the natural style in which he carries the football. Of course, when you run the offense, the option also, that type of an offense, you have to have a quarterback that can take a few licks now and then because he is going to have to carry that football, and it's uh, you have to have a really great athlete as a quarterback to be able to run that option. Well, any team that, that, that attempts to run the option, especially at big-time college football, has got to have an all-around athlete there. Not only has he got to be a great runner, but he's got to be a passer as well. And Foggy, if you look around the, uh, around the country, uh, Hollyfield at uh, Oklahoma is the same type of athlete. We haven't seen this type of athlete in the Big Ten in a while, though. And when he came on as a freshman, he really did pose a lot of problems to defenses in an effort to, to, to try to stop him. Now you add a running back like Daryl Thompson and some of the receivers that the Gophers have got, now gotten, and they are generally a contending football team now. 7.24 left in the first quarter. No score from the Metrodome in Minneapolis. First and 10 for the Golden Gophers from the 43-yard line. Foggy lining up behind that offensive line. Thompson, Wilson in the backfield behind him. Hog Foggy still in the grass, gets rid of the football, does a great job of getting rid of it. Taylor had an arm wrapped around his leg. John Breeze was also there, but Foggy somehow stayed on his feet and got rid of the football. He did a good job of just getting the ball away as he makes the fake. There you see Kevin Wilson beckoning for the ball downfield. Foggy checks, can't get it off, and just decides to throw it in into the sidelines there for an incompletion, but that shows you some of the strength of a running back because he was clearly in the grasp of Taylor and was able to, to stay up long enough to, to throw the ball away and prevent the loss of down on yardage. Second down and 10, straight up the middle, Thompson. Harold Thompson just looks like the picture-perfect running back. Tall, fast, strong. He possesses all the things uh, weighing in at 204 pounds. Hayden Fry was very high on this, this man out of high school and actively tried to get him to wear a Hawkeye uniform. But Terrell cho chose to stay at home, and he's really done well for Minnesota. Third down and six from the 47. Foggy rolls, finds an opening. He's got the first down. Foggy decided to take it himself. Saw that first down marker and just stepped outside of it to pick up another first down for Minnesota. Well, here in this first quarter, it's been all Minnesota as far as moving the football, although 
both teams haven't scored. There you see Schmidt coming up on the play there and forcing him out of bounds. A little movement by both sides after the play was dead, but Ricky really ignites this team well and can move him. First and 10 from the 45. The ball is fumbled again. Iowa is pointing their way, saying they have the football, but apparently Minnesota will hold on to it. Dave Haight was down at the bottom of that pile, big number 64 for the Hawkeyes. Dave Haight has had an outstanding year for Iowa. He not only did he pick up, pick up a lot of slack when Jeff Dross became hurt, but he's really established himself as one of the top nose guards in this conference. Second down and eight. Thompson and Getz in the backfield. Foggy. Was in trouble, gets it off, and it's complete to Craig Otto. Otto, the big tight end from Elk River, Minnesota, came up with the catch. And another first down for Minnesota. You talk about the elusiveness of the quarterback. Watch Foggy get out of the arms of Jeff Dross here. Dross breaks free. But Foggy just has enough to get, and he sees Otto downfield and lifts the ball perfectly there to him. Here we, we're showing you that option we talked about because they're sprinting away from Iowa's strength, which is the heart of the defense, and looking to put Foggy in an option situation downfield, whether to throw or run. The ball at the 25-yard line. Foggy calls timeout just before the 25-second clock runs out. 541 left in the first quarter. The Gophers threatening, knocking at the door of Iowa. No score from Minneapolis. We'll be back with more on Sports Vision. That is our time left in the first quarter. 541. Still no score. Minnesota is threatening, though. First and 10 from the 25-yard line. Ricky Foggy has been the story. Four of five carries for 37 yards. Foggy again gets out of the grasp of one of the Hawkeye defenders, but then goes down. Dave Haight was there to make the stop. The Hawkeyes know to contain Foggy. This is what they're going to have to do. We saw gear breaking through and getting an arm up, but Foggy breaking loose of that, but that allows the time for the pursuit. There you see Dross, you see Haight, you see gear all coming back on him. They're going to have to attempt to contain Minnesota's option and allow Iowa's progressive pursuit time to catch up with Foggy and nullify a lot of these plays. Loss of three. Second down at 13. Thompson breaks a big one. That is why the freshman leads the conference in rushing. Over 1,100 yards. First down for Minnesota. Lining him up here in the backfield here. This is just a straight handoff right off tackle and he takes it and shows some great acceleration looking a lot like uh, the Rams Eric Dickerson there not only is he tall but very very fast once he breaks the line of scrimmage all he needs is the glasses now that's all he's got the, the body for it first and 10 from the 11 foggy audible Isaac and again it is Thompson finding a hole his best game of the year was early against Bowling Green. He ran for 205 yards. And it's hard to imagine this kid just being a freshman because he possesses a lot of the attributes you're looking for in a pro running back. Uh, his running ability there seen in the difficulty it takes for one person to tackle him. They're going to have to really do a good job of standing him up and allowing other tacklers to come in and reinforce the tackle on this young man. Second down and five. The Gophers can get a first down to the one-yard line. The ball at the six. Touchdown, Minnesota. Ron Getz. First man through, punches it in. The Golden Gophers have a 6 nothing lead. Great ball control that series. Marching down the field. 
Well, just when you start looking for Daryl Thompson, this is what they do. That's Getz right up the middle there. And he takes it and drives past the line of scrimmage. Getz just a, just a freshman, another one of these freshmen from Minnesota, from Wacom, Wacom. Did a good job of flying for six yards. Low Miller in for the point after a set. He was the big man last week. Hitting that field goal to beat Michigan. It's up and good. So with 350 left, it is Minnesota seven and Iowa nothing. I think that kind of tells you there uh, the impact Minnesota has. We were talking about uh, after last week's game, would they be ripe for a mental letdown? But they're really taking it to the Hawkeyes here in the first opening quarter, driving the ball not only on this touchdown carry, but uh, the series before, had it not been for the fumble, they were driving the ball very well against the Hawkeyes then too, as well. well. A year ago in Iowa City, the Hawkeyes were the big winner, 31 to nine over Minnesota, and then Iowa won an 83, 61 to 10, but the Hawkeyes have had trouble playing in the Metrodome. They lost a the game here two years ago, 23 to 17, and uh, Metrodome seems to be just a tough place to play for Iowa. Maybe it's because it's the only dome stadium they'll play in all year long. Only dome stadium. There's a lot of rivalry between these two squads, and um, the crowd has a lot to do with it. These Gopher fans are really into the, the, their team, and they, they really get up for them. And the two years ago, we were at that game two years ago here, and clearly Iowa came into the game with a better football team, but they really got their lunch handed to them by the Gophers. They came out very, very aggressive, very fired up, pretty similar to what they're doing today, but this is two years later, and they really field a better quality team now. Robert Smith and Kevin Harmon back deep for the Hawkeyes. Minnesota with a 7 nothing lead. This one goes eight yards deep into the end zone. Iowa will touch it down. Harmon drops to one knee, and the Hawkeyes will take over at the 20-yard line. Both possessions, Iowa has had four field positions. They really have. They came out throwing, and this is one thing that Peyton Fry feels that will be able to do is, is penetrate the, the Gopher secondary. They've got the type of receivers. Quinn Early really coming into the second half of this season has really been a big spark plug, but they've got Robert Smith, they've got Jim Morrow, and they've got the tight end who they haven't been using as much, but in the second half of the season, we've really seen a lot of work there. Robert Smith lines up in the backfield, now splits wide right. Richard Bass, the lone back for the Hawkeyes. First and 10 from the 20. And Pahoski has it batted down by Larry Joyner. Joyner. Senior linebacker from Memphis, Tennessee. What a game he had last week against Michigan. Credited with 11 tackles, created two fumbles. Here he deflects the pass by Poholski. And there you see him just getting high into the air, out jumping in reality Richard Bass's block. Joining her a senior has been a big play man for this Gopher defense all season long. Second down at 10. Paholski tries to check off at the line of scrimmage. Remember, very noisy in the Metrodome. The inside handoff. And Rick Bayless squirts across the 30 for the first down. Donovan Small, the free safety, came out to make the stop, but not before Bayless picked up 11 yards. Bayless is the type of running back that he just ticks away at you piece by piece. Here you see him taking this switch play here and just weaving his way, Donovan Small coming up and just being able to trip him there at the final moment. But we talked about the, the key with Bayless was the fact that he just followed his blocker so well. He'll, he won't progressively push. He'll just wait and wait for a hole to open up and then he'll squirt through it. First and 10 from the 32. Iowa goes straight up the middle. Some pushing and shoving going along. Down to the line of scrimmage now. Rick Bayless with 27 yards so far tonight. Needs just 38 yards to join the 1,000-yard club for the Hawkeyes. Only two other players have done it, Dennis Mosley and Kevin Harmon. Ronnie Harmon, Kevin, of course, still playing. Always get the two mixed up. They seem so similar in style at times. 
Kevin's hoping to do it before he gets out of this Hawkeye uniform as well. Ronnie now playing for the Buffalo Bills in the NFL. Second down and seven from the 35. Maholski, plenty of time. He's got Robert Smith over the middle. And Smith pulls it in at the 46-yard line. Robert Smith caught that ball at midfield and ducked his head. He knew what was coming. This is where the Hawkeyes feel they can beat the Gophers, down in the secondary. Robert Smith is just running right through the middle, and his job is to find the seam. Now, as you see, as he finds it here, right about at the 50-yard line, Paholski just fires it in right between. Now, you see there's six or seven Gophers in there, but right where Robert Smith was, there was a gaping hole. It was a great job by the senior from Dallas, Texas, finding the hole and catching the ball before taking those licks. First and 10 from the 46 of Minnesota. Bayless down to the 39. Rick Bayless inching closer and closer now and he's just three yards to hit that thousand yard point. And of course, big factor for him is he is a Minnesota kid. Uh, went to school in Hugo, Minnesota. Doing it before the home crowd. And there are plenty of folks here, 63 thousand crowding the Metrodome a sellout tonight to see the Hawkeyes and the Golden Gophers second down at three Bayless again and he is cut down at the 38 yard line by the free safety once again Donovan Small been in a lot of plays early in the game Donovan Small really has been all over this field in just the first quarter Rick Bayless takes this pitch out Picks up some good blocking, but watch Jonathan Small just come into your picture and just cut the legs right out from under Rick Bayless. We had a penalty mark on the play, however, that may nullify it. Because had the play gone, we think Mr. Bayless would have gone over 1,000 yards with that carry. Bruce Holmes talking it over with one of the officials. Appears to be against Iowa. And it's a big one. Possibly a clip. Holding against the Hawkeyes. That will make it second down and 13. Now the ball pushed back to the 49-yard line. 127 left in the first quarter. Minnesota 7, Iowa nothing. Robert Smith is split wide right. Quinn early to the left. Hayden Fry's team needs to put some points on the board. Maholski across the middle to Quinn early, and he is just overthrown. Quinn early, though, was matched step for step by Matt Martinez. But apparently, Iowa feels that they can go deep on this Minnesota team, that that secondary may be their weakness. Oh, obviously, with Paholski and, and Velasic both, they feel they've got the quarterbacks with the arms, and in Smith, Quinn Early and Jim Morrow, they think they have the receivers that they can really exploit this go for secondary. On that particular play, we had Paholski rolling one way, setting up to isolate Quinn Early streaking down the, the left side of the field. He just was overthrown. Great job by Matt Martinez, as you mentioned, because he was stride for stride. Martinez is a freshman, so we might see a little isolation on him attempting to get him into some rookie mistakes early on. Now, Paholski sees the Gophers showing Blitz backs away from the line of scrimmage. And they're going to hit the Hawkeyes for too much time. And that, again, may be a factor of the noise here at the Metrodome. Paholski was trying to check off. In fact, he motioned to his receiver wide to the right. So many times the players on that front line can hear the call, but when you're a receiver, as you were, yeah. it's very difficult to hear it when you're 10 yards out. It really is. And that, the one point that they're trying to make is that the receiver's actually look into the inside of the quarterback because of just that. If he chooses to check off to a play, it, he's got to make sure that they understand the play long before he gets into his cadence, and sometimes that'll carry them past the allotted time given. That's what the case there. That brings up a third down and 18 for Iowa. The ball is now at the 46-yard line in Iowa territory. Minnesota drops back deep. The next to receiver, Paholski's arm is hit as he releases the football. Larry Joyner once again was the man to get a piece of the ball. Joyner blocked one earlier in this series. I think we have a penalty flag on the play. I think we had a little movement by the Iowa lineman before the play started. But watch Joyner just fly into your picture here and get one arm. That's his left arm that he got up on Paholski's pass. 
The referee here showing illegal procedure against the Hawkeyes. They'll probably decline it and turn the ball over. Hayden Fly, the Hawkeyes having problems early in Minneapolis. Golden Gophers with a 7-0 lead. 44 seconds left in the first quarter. Kostrabala to punt. Rosell Richardson was the man back deep. So with 36 seconds left, Minnesota will take over, leading 7-0. Once again, Gary Kostrabala getting off a pretty good punt, had some pressure on it. Yeah, that was Gary Couch. Junior out of one of the few Iowans on this team, Junior out of Daffenport, Iowa. You remember Gary Couch from two years ago as a freshman. He uh, scored the winning touchdown against the Hawkeyes. Uh, great tribute to him. He hasn't been seeing as much time for the Gophers these past few seasons after being switched from running back to wide receiver. As we said earlier, both these teams headed for bowl games this year, both first division teams. Right now, what they're playing for, perhaps uh, Lloyd of Rosedale, we may laugh a little bit, but this trophy would make three trophies that Minnesota would have won this year, winning uh, the Axe uh, from Wisconsin. Uh, what was that other trophy? There's another trophy involved in this series. Michigan. Was Michigan, it? yeah. Good what it was. The brown jug, brown yes, jug. brown jug. So uh, that has some significance, of course. But of course, John Gutekunst in his his first full year, uh, wanting to finish as good as he can. And now, as we said, both teams going to bowl games now. Apparently, Gutekunst is really inheriting a very strong team from Lou Holtz. Uh, Lou Holtz down in Notre Dame left uh, in the years that he was here. He really built a foundation that Gutekunst is is really reaping a lot of the benefits from. Although he's a fine coach in his own right. Thompson to find freshman running back. 6'2", 215. And he is not a red shirt. He is a true freshman. Thompson just breaks tackles as he drives off tackle here. Watch this initial tackle. That's Kerry Burt coming up and just bouncing off. Ken Sims does a good job of hemming him out of bounds. I think that was more... Ken Sims just being trapped against him out on the, on the out-of-bounds line. There we see Thompson from Rochester, Minnesota, another hometown person. It's great for Minnesota to be gra la grabbing hold of all these hometown products because if they can get the, the top quality in-state products to stay at home, this will really build the team for the future. Ron gets the ball carrier for Minnesota. The clock winding down in the first quarter. Gets in another freshman. We talked about he scored the first touchdown of the game. Thompson, six carries for 47 yards. On the other side of the field, Rick Bayless, five for 35. Bayless needing just three yards to reach that 1,000-point plateau, 1,000-yard plateau. Drost and the Hawkeyes go over for a second and check it over. That's the end of the first quarter of play. It is Minnesota 7 and Iowa nothing. Welcome back for the start of the second quarter from Minneapolis. Second down and eight at the 35. Craig Otto in motion. Foggy back to pass. And it is complete to the man in motion, Craig Otto. Number 84, 6'3", sophomore from Elk River, Minnesota. Foggy is really not known for his passing, but he steps up into the pocket here, given all day by the gopher offensive line and just fires this ball right over the head of the Iowa secondary man there you see Kenny Sims just out over his outreach hand great catch by Otto but watch Foggy again setting up there we see Burt actually making contact with Foggy after the play is over but it was a great throw and a super catch first and ten from the 37 Ed Penn now checks in number 24 Foggy though goes Straight up the middle, gain of one, maybe two yards. Contact made there before the play really got started between Foggy and the fullback. 
this is a rather young gopher team you're looking at here. We got Ed Penn checking in at tailback number 24. He's a sophomore from Tampa, Florida. We've seen Goats, who's another freshman, along with Daryl Thompson, who's a freshman. So you're looking at three, two freshmen and a sophomore there in the backfield. And Fogey's got another year back at quarterback. And pick number 76, Jeff Dross, just buries the man as he comes up to the line. That is what Iowa missed the last few weeks when he was was injured, had a knee injury though, but with him back, they are a much different ball club up front. You can't say enough about Jeff Dross because he's got so much potential, injured very early on, lining up against Troy Wolfolk, the offensive guard, and he just manhandled Wolfolk and able to make the stop there for no gain at all. Third down and eight from the 35. Foggy has the first down to Mel Anderson. Foggy rolled left Anderson out of the flat, found the first down marker, and the Gophers are moving the football once again against Iowa. Anderson, a senior from Homestead, Pennsylvania. Key that made that play successful is the fact that Foggy rolled away again as we talked about the sprint out because what he does is he presents a dual problem for the cornerback. He realizes that he's got to be aware of the fact that Foggy may tuck this ball and run with it and it allows a lot looser contain on the secondary. Thompson breaks it outside and is dragged down from behind by Kerry Burt. Kyle Crow also coming over there along with Ken Sims but once he finds some running, brother, you better grab on. That's like grabbing onto the tail of a rocket. Oh, he really is because he slices in and outside, and now he's moving to the outside. Kerry Burt does a good job of getting his hands on him, and this is what they're going to have to do. Ken Sims, while one has had his hands on him, Ken Sims came up and finished him off, and they're going to have to do that if they want to contain this man. Thompson took a shot that time from Sims last time up. He goes to the sideline. Second down and six from the 19. Foggy will hold on to it, and he is dragged down by Kerry Burt. Burt is another one of those Hawkeye defensive players that has been injured, some of the walking wounded, as Hayden Fry calls him, but he is back now and having an impact. And playing hurt, as you see him walk back to the huddle there, he took two shots, not only that shot there, but the shot that he delivered to Thompson the play before, and he is one of the walking wounded for the Hawkeyes, but his experience and his leadership is greatly needed in the Hawkeye secondary, and he's come on and played well. Third down and five from the 18. And a flag down. Apparently, Minnesota took too much time getting the play off. That'll push them back five yards. John Gutekunst, the first-year head coach of the Golden Gophers, came here as a defensive coordinator with Lou Holtz back in 1984 when Holtz moved on to Notre Dame. He got the position and is doing quite well now, thank you. Doing very, very well in his own right, and another one of the emerging coaches in the country. He's in the last two years, well, really the last year, because he took over the Gophers right after Holtz had announced he was leaving for Notre Dame, but really spearheaded the team into that Independence Bowl victory and into a fine 86. After the penalty, it is third and 10 from the 23. Foggy rolls right. And with a couple of great moves, almost picks up the first down, down to the 14-yard line. What an elusive runner Ricky Foggy is. He made that play himself. Oh, he really did. And depending upon where they mark it, he may have done enough for the first down. This is an option pass, and this is what we talked about. Foggy electing to just duck it, tuck the ball, and run with it. And here you see some of the moves that he puts on. There's one there. After Brad Quas actually hits him, he lunges forward for a couple of extra yards, and depending upon the marking, we think it'll be just shy of a first down, but it was a great effort by Ricky Foggy there. Minnesota calls timeout. Now the question is, do you kick the field goal and take the 10-point lead, or do you... Trying to put
push it for the first down. Well, with the option, the way they've been running it, they've been very successful uh, when Foggy takes it out and uses Daryl Thompson as a, as a pitch man, a trail man. But the Hawkeyes uh, throughout the year have been, been become big play defenses, so uh, they've been able to rise to the occasion here, and they're well aware of that. And this may be the first test that they're putting this Hawkeye defense to, but they're experienced, and I think they're more than up to it. It was interesting that before the game had begun, even as early as last week when all the bowl talk was uh, starting to uh, make the newspapers, Hayden Fry said, well, even if we get an opportunity to play somewhere, which Iowa is uh, pretty much assured they're going to, to the Holiday Bowl, I'm not going to, to go through any ceremony before the game. I, I don't want my players to think about that at all. Right now, all we care about is this football game. The same was true with John Gutekunst at Minnesota with them going to a bowl game as well this year. He said, hey, this football game, most important to me right now. We're going to play it and worry about that afterwards. Well, really, uh, this has a lot of bearing on where each team will come out, not only for the Bulls, but for next year's preseason teams, because a lot of both of these teams return a lot of players from uh, a team that has done very, very well. This may be Minnesota's best record in a number of years, and they both want to win. Fourth and one. Foggy made that on his own effort. If they credited him where he, he lunged over, that's first down. That's all Ricky Foggy there. That was an option keeper. And when he, he faked it to the dive man and chose to just follow the hole that he left, and he lunged forward for two extra yards to get the first down. We see Hayden Fry on the sidelines with Dan McCarney, the Iowa defensive line coach. First and 10, the ball at the 12-yard line. And Foggy checks it off. Gatch now is in the backfield. The handoff is to Thompson. Thompson is wrapped up at the line of scrimmage. George Davis coming up to make this stop. Of course, Ricky Foggy was involved in a little bit of controversy at the beginning of the season. He, along with Don Pollard, were ruled ineligible for uh, about three or four days, it seemed like, because of a, a ticket that was bought for a trip that they reimbursed the university for, and that created some controversy leading up to their first game, but everything got squared away, and now Foggy is trying to put Minnesota up 14 to nothing, leading them to their second bowl game in two years. Now Thompson takes it into the end zone. Daryl Thompson, the freshman from Rochester, Minnesota, the leading rusher in the Big Ten, has given the Golden Gophers a 13-0 lead. This was the exact play they ran prior that they fumbled the ball. Tom Foggy did a good job of pitching this ball in time, allowing Thompson an opportunity to catch it, tuck it away, and then turn on the speed downfield. He was not touched until he hit the end zone there by Kerry Burt. Thompson already 65 yards, and we've still got over a half of a ball game left to play. Point after is good by Low Miller, and it is 14 to nothing. The Golden Gophers on top of the Iowa Hawkeyes. We'll be back with more on Sports News. Gutekunst talking it over with his quarterback, Ricky Foggy. Golden Gophers up 14 to nothing over the Iowa Hawkeyes. It was the number one rushing defense in the league against the number one rushing offense, and so far the offense is winning. This kick goes into the end zone, so once again on their third possession, the Hawkeyes will have average at best field position taking over from the 20. They've started from the 20 twice and from the 11-yard line once. Well, the thing the Hawkeyes have not been able to do thus far in the first half has been able to sustain a drive. They've got a couple of good series going. But the thing they have been able, haven't been able to do is capitalize on the third down situations. They have got a hole in the, the, the Minnesota secondary. They have seemed to be going toward that a couple of times with Quinn Early and Robert Smith. But as of yet, they haven't been able to sustain anything on the third and crucial down. 
Bayless is alone back on first and 10 from the 20. Morrow is split to the left. The handoff is to Bayless. He tries to get outside, and he is chased down from behind. John Lavernez was the man that got the hand on Rick Bayless and tugged him down from behind. Lavernez comes up from his linebacking position there, and you see some great speed on his part being able to chase down Rick Bayless and one-handed tackling, allowing him time for the pursuit for the Gophers to catch up with him. Lavernus is another red-shirted freshman, so you've seen a lot of young athletes playing for the Gophers and playing very well. Second and eight. Mahulski back to pass. He'll air it out. Robert Smith. Smith and Donovan Small go up fighting for the football. Again, that pass was underthrown. Robert Smith had to slow down, try to come back for it. Robert Smith has split the zone on this play, but the ball was lofted up in the air long enough that Donovan Small can come over from his free safety spot, and there you see how high he got in the air to deflect it. Donovan Small is just that, 5'11", 185, but he got up that time. Got a hand on the football. Third down and eight. The Holski, still the quarterback for the Hawkeyes. We have not seen Mark Velasic as of yet. Mahulski is in a lot of trouble, but the screen pass. Richard Bass. Got enough for the first down, depending upon where they're marking. A great time for a screen play because Paholski was being rushed very <laughs> aggressively by the, the gopher front line. As he dumped the ball off to Bass, Bass had a crew of blockers in front of him and fouled him for a first down. Now, that was the first time that the Hawkeyes has really turned a third down situation into a first down. First and 10 from the 31 for the Hawkeyes. Side handoff to Bayless. Steve Thompson making the stop on Bayless. Now, Bayless has gone over that 1,000-yard mark for the season. Needed 38. With that, it puts him over. He has 41 yards. Hayden Fry sending in the plays from the sidelines. He does call most of the offensive plays for the Hawkeyes. Iowa shuttled the plays in with their tight ends. Mike Flagg and Marv Cook, Craig Clark, the other tight end, has been in the hospital the last three or four days with an infection that has kept him from practicing all week. In fact, he spent three days in the hospital. Second down and six. Maholski looks again. It's complete to Jim Morrow at the 50 to the 45. He's big down to the 30, the 20. And out of bounds at the 12-yard line. Jimmy Morrow somehow stayed in bounds and kept going. Jim Morrow, another one of those walk-ons, a senior from Des Moines, Iowa. Paholski did a good job of keeping his cool here. He was lining this play up to go to Quinn early deep, but Quinn was well covered. He chose to stop back and throw over the middle to Morrow, who makes a great catch there and does a good job of alleviating one tackler and then shows some speed here and darting down the sideline. There's past another. That's number 45 for Dwayne Dotrell left cornerback. He did a good job of getting by two gopher defenders and putting this great scoring opportunity for the Hawkeyes. The first they've had all, all game. First and 10 from the 11-yard line for Iowa. Bayless gets back to the line of scrimmage, maybe. Caught from behind. That may be just what Iowa needed, though. A big play to get the momentum to shift a little bit their way. They definitely did because it's been all Minnesota thus far in the first half. Rick Bayless, the running back, just gone over 1,000 yards, becoming the third Hawkeye ever in Iowa history to go over 1,000 yards, but he traded all in now for a touchdown here. Second and eight from the nine. A pickup of one by Bayless. Quinn Early is wide left. Jimmy Morrow to the right. The inside pitch to Bayless. Down to the five-yard line. Again, Steve Thompson making the stop, along with Bruce Holmes. 
Hawkeyes mixing their plays up pretty well now. That was just the forward lateral there. For Holsky's statistics so far in this first half, he's four of eight for 132 yards. The big play coming just there, you saw in that reception by Morrow. 6.35 left in the half. Iowa trails Minnesota 14-0. Big play for the Hawkeyes. Third down and four from the five. Polsky has time and goes down and loses the football. Minnesota has recovered. Mark Deuce Bobbing, apparently the man recovered the football. This is a great job by the Gopher secondary. Pahulski's got all the time he needs to throw it, but he just got no receiver. There you see the pressure coming in, and number 59, Deuce Bobbick does a good job of just batting the ball right out of Pahulski's arm. And then Gary Had, number 63, actually came up with the tackle, but that was a great play by Deuce Bobbick coming from the left side of, of the field there and just swatting the ball right out of Pahulski's arm. Gary Had was the man that came up with the fumble recovery. Had a, never was intended to start today. Steve Rodas, the nose guard, was supposed to be the starter. Came up with a stomach flu. Instead, Had was the man starting in his place. Well, each week, Sports Vision covers football like no other station. Aiden Fry every Wednesday. Fred Akers and Jackie Sherrill on Thursdays. Lou Holtz on Fridays and Tom Landry of the Dallas Cowboys on Saturday. And don't miss the Doug Buffone Rich King football show from Mike Dick's restaurant every Friday night. For the most comprehensive football coverage in the Midwest, watch Sports Vision. Here we see Hayden Fry on the sidelines talking to Carl Jackson, the running back coach for the Hawkeyes, and he's very, very disappointed there. The Hawkeyes had the ball in perfect scoring position, and turnover came over to give Minnesota the, the play on downs. Gophers have it with 6.18 left in the half. Hayden Fry and the Hawks down 14-0, missing a golden opportunity to score. Gets and Thompson in the backfield for the Gophers. Thompson on first down. It's interesting when you run a team, uh, run up against a team like the Gophers, when you know what their strong suit is, their option and off tackle plays, because to, to become successful when you, you're that one train, you've got to have some tremendous athletes. And the Hawkeyes know full well where they're coming at it. They're coming at it with the option, and they're coming at it with Thompson off tackle, and as yet, they have yet to been able to stop them. Second down and nine from the 12. Otto in motion. Foggy in trouble, just left it fly. And wisely throws it out of bounds. Foggy back in his own end zone under heavy pursuit. The only man within 10 yards of that football, though, was Keaton Smiley, number 44 of the Hawkeyes. Here you see Dwight Sistrunk and Keaton Smiley beckoning to the referees to, to call that uh, illegal grounding. But Foggy showing some experience here when a play does not develop, choosing not to force something, he'll just throw the ball out of bounds. Third down and nine now for the Golden Gophers. Foggy rolls right. He's got some running room, puts it down and crosses the 15, does not get enough for the first down. Jeff Drost was there to make the stop, along with George Davis for the Hawkeyes. Foggy comes up short. And for one of the few times this evening, Minnesota will punt. Foggy was kind of laughing as he went off the sidelines there, talking with Gary Couch, the wide receiver for the Gophers, because Dross, Davis, and Burt did a good job of sandwiching him there and preventing him an opportunity to scramble forward to some yards. This is what the kicker is looking at, her bell with the putt. Goes off the side of his foot. Takes a Minnesota bounce. Peter Marciano will let it go out of bounds at the 34-yard line. 
4.36 left in the half. It is Minnesota 14 and Iowa nothing. We'll be back with more on Sports Vision. Welcome back to the Metrodome in Minneapolis. Bob Healy along with Keith Chappell. It is first and 10 from the 34 for the Hawkeyes. The best field position they have had to start a series all evening. Quick pass over the middle is complete to Mike Flagg, the big tight end from Cedar Falls, Iowa. A pickup of five, Bruce Holmes. Makes the stop for the Golden Gophers. That'll bring up second down and three, a gain of seven. It's going to be important for the Hawkeyes to put some points on the board here with less than five minutes, four, less than four minutes left uh, in the game, in the first half. It's going to be important to go into halftime with some points on the board to really give you something to build from coming into the second half. The draw play to Bayless, and it works. Bayless picks up the first down. Steve Franklin came up from the strong safety spot to make the stop, but Bayless picks up five or six yards, and the Hawkeyes pick up the first down. 3.52 left in the half. Okay. Hawkeyes still have all three of their timeouts left. Minnesota just one. And they're keeping their speed receivers in. You see Robert Smith and Quinn Early and also Jim Morrow. So they're going to go into their, their three receiver set in a second here. There you see uh, Morrow splitting out. The host is looking for Morrow. And a great catch by Jim Morrow, keeping his feet inbounds at the 37-yard line. Jimmy Morrow knew just how far he had to go before he was out of bounds and hung on for the catch. Morrow comes into this game averaging better than 20 yards a catch, and you see why. He's a great, skilled receiver. He knows how to, to, to play both sides of the field, and once there, watch him. As he catches this ball, he keeps one foot in bounds. He knows all the time that he's got to make sure one foot stays in bounds and he concentrates on the ball, brings it in, and does both at the same time. First and 10 for the 37, 325 left to play. Bass and Bayless in the backfield. Paholski with plenty of time. Looking for Robert Smith. Smith had it right in his hands at the 30-yard line, couldn't hold on. The Hawkeyes choosing to switch up and use a lot of different formations out of the slot now because they're trying to open up their, their offense a little bit. When you put Robert Smith and Quinn Early on the same side, you've got to draw the respect of the secondary over that way. And with a receiver like Jimmy Morrow isolated on the other side, he's a great route runner and can do a good job of getting open. So you've got to honor both sides. Second down at 10. Paholski checking off. A deep drop. He's got time over the middle to Quinn Early. It's complete. Early still on his feet and jumps over the 15-yard line. Dwayne Dutrell was the man between Early and the goal line, and Tom Paholski showed a lot of courage hanging in that pocket as long as he did. He really did. This was a great audible for Paholski, and he knows that the rush is coming on him, but he also knows that Quinn Early is streaking downfield here being guarded single man, and he does a good job of breaking upfield, breaking Mar Martinez tackle there, and just going airborne over number 45. That's Dwayne Dutrell, the quarterback for the Gophers. Clock still ticking, 2.54 left to play in the half. First and 10 from the 14. Paholski... In trouble, and he's going to go down. Gary Had, the man that recovered that fumble earlier in the game with the quarterback sack, the nose guard for the Golden Gophers. Gary Had, for a guy not slated to start, is having a phenomenal game. The Hawkeyes only had two receivers in the pattern there, and that really didn't allow Poholski much of a choice. They were both well covered downfield, and Had playing off the block of... The Mark Singling is there, does a good job of following the flow and tackling Paholski, pulling him out of great field position back to the 22, 23 yard line. Second down and 19 after the loss. Paholski will go to the air once again. And it is intercepted in the end zone. What? Donovan Small decides to run it back out. 
And he picks up some pretty good yardage out to the 24-yard line. It looked like that was a bad decision at first. He just chose to force this ball play in here. He's looking at Quinn Early. Quinn Early is well covered, but he just chooses to loft the ball right into the crowd. Donovan Small must have been looking at the films last week of Rod Woodson, who took out a ball for Purdue and ran it back 100 yards, and he does a good job of getting this ball upfield. But right after the, the, at the tackle here, we had some motion and a flag was called by the official, and I thought what you were going to see was either a, a piling on or an intentional roughness. There we see the mark off. There you're looking at Donovan Small, who's really been all over the field for the Gophers here in this first half, coming up with, well, isn't that his second interception? Didn't he come up with the first one? Not sure. May on have. Quinn Early? I believe it was. It was small that the ball bounced out of the hands of Quinn Early and yeah. came up into it. Yeah. That's his second interception. But more importantly, it takes Iowa out of a great scoring drive. That's twice now Iowa has been stopped when they were in field position to at least pick up a field goal. I think that might have been recorded a fumble recovery rather than an interception. Rather than an interception. Foggy is looking to put some more points on the board quickly. He goes deep for Mel Anderson. That'll bring up second down and 10. 149 left to play in the half. Minnesota 14, Iowa zip. Iowa turning the ball over on two golden opportunities deep in the Gopher territory. The first one, a fumble by Tom Boholsky that was recovered, and the other one just a poorly thrown ball into the end zone there. We talked about the difference that a, a couple of years make. Paholsky is a great quarterback, and he's done a phenomenal job for the Hawkeyes, but that was just a freshman mistake. He shouldn't have thrown that ball into the crowd for Quinn Early. And straight up the middle, Daryl Thompson chugs his way for eight or nine yards, possibly a first down. Thompson gets going full speed before you know it. Watch, after taking this ball, he's at full speed right through the line. That's a great job blocking by the Gophers, who really opened up a gaping hole on the left side of the line. Dwight Sistrunk for the Hawkeyes coming up and finally making the stop, but it was more than enough for a first down. 12 carries for 77 yards for Thompson in only one half. The pitch is to Thompson. He's got some running room. Thompson finally tackled by Brad Quash, the freshman linebacker for the Hawkeyes. Now John Gutekus urging his team on from the sidelines. Telling them to get rolling. The clock is moving. <laughs> the crowd really getting into that. Delbert Thompson does a great job of always eluding the first tackler. Kerry Burt came up there and just couldn't even get a hand on him. Brad Quash was able to, to finish him off in the open field there. 45 seconds now left in the half. Foggy again looking downfield for Anderson and it is picked off by for 22 for the Hawkeyes, Dwight Sistra. So John Gutekunst selecting the gamble at the end of the half trying to bury Iowa early with 21 points. Doesn't pay off. Well, this is Minnesota's uh, rendition of give the ball back because Dwight Sistrunk did a good job in nickel backs on covering Mel Anderson there in the flat, but that was a poorly thrown ball. It should have been thrown. Mel Anderson, although he may have looked open, Dwight Sistrunk was just sitting there in a zone coverage waiting on the ball, and that credit Dwight Sistrunk for coming up with the big play for the Hawkeyes. The Hawkeyes will take over with... 38 seconds left in the half, down 14 nothing. First and 10 from their 11-yard line. Now, do you take a chance and try to get downfield, or you, do you just sit on the ball and try not to make any mistakes? I was going to go to the air. The Hosky loses the football. Anthony Burke takes it in, and now there is a flag down there saying. No touchdown. Paholsky was in the act of throwing. Burke had a lineman's dream there, a touchdown. Now but that's a big break for the Hawkeyes because let's see if we can see it on the replay. The referee ruled that he was throwing the ball forward, and I don't know. I don't know about that at all. There we see 
the Minnesota Gopher coaches having to be pulled off the field, but watch his throwing hand. Paholsky doesn't get this ball going at all. Now there is a big screen instant replay. No, that's up ball. above the stadium. You cannot see it, but the people here at the Metrodome are looking at the same replay that we are and saw the same thing, and they are reacting, booing. Steve, they Tom saw it indeed should have been a touchdown. Apparently. Big break for Iowa. 31 seconds left now. Bayless straight up the middle. The Hawkeyes come away lucky there. I think both teams have really uh, had some bad plays here. But Steve Thompson, uh, the gopher defensive tackle, just broke the line of scrimmage there and punched that ball out of Paholsky's arm before he ever got it going, throw, throwing forward. Uh, the referee on top of it ruled that he had moved the motion forward and called it an incomplete pay. Otherwise, that ball should have been, uh, it would have been recorded as a, an interception. It would have been a fumble recovery, and the ball would have been dead at that point. It wouldn't have been a touchdown, but it would have been go for ball in great field position. There you see the entire go for defensive unit there on the sidelines getting instruction. They've really played well this first half. But if you're the Hawkeye team now, going down 14-0 uh, really is not bad because they have moved the ball pretty well. They just, in both of the situations where they had opportunity scoring drives, they just came away with turnovers. Twenty-one seconds left. Third and four. The ball's on the Iowa 17-yard line. The Hawkeyes come back to a round of booze from 63,000-plus here at the Metrodome. They still believe Minnesota should have scored. Bayless goes nowhere. And now Minnesota is calling timeout quickly. They're thinking they can get the football back, perhaps go for a block on the go punt. for a punt block, yeah. That's what they're going to attempt to do here. That is the time left in the first half. John Gutekunst talking it over with his players and will try to block this punt. Now Gary Costabala is the man that does the punting for the Hawkeyes. Well, they've got two opportunities here. Not only do they have an opportunity to block the punt, but with the ball going in great field position, if they do get the punt off, they could set up a return. They feel very confident in their, their return guy. Richardson here, standing about on the, his own 43, 44-yard line. Roselle Richardson is the man back. Gary Costabala will punt from about his six-yard line. Iowa puts one man wide to the left and Quinn early. And Costabala gets off a good punt. Roselle at the 40-yard line. Trying to get out of bounds. And he does at the 45 with four seconds left. And Minnesota does not have any timeouts left. So a chance to go for one, put it in the end zone, or try a very, very long field goal. Yeah, when you've got a running back like Delbert Thompson and a quarterback like Ricky Foggy, one play is really all you need. They can really uh, attempt to, but I think they may air this ball out. Getting it downfield, no. They're bringing out the field goal team. <laughs> now this shows you how much confidence they have in their field goal kicker who won the game for him last week against Michigan. This has got to be a 62-yard field goal. Low Miller has hit one of 55 yards this year. Also 46, 47. So he does have some range in that leg. This may be long enough. And it is! <laughs> Unbelievable. Apparently a 62-yard that's he has to break some records. I don't know if we can scan the record book, but that's got to be a, a gopher, if not a Big Ten record. Here we see a replay of it. This is 62 yards, folks. And just enough. Just, just enough. clears the crossbar. 
That is the end of the first half of play, and it has to be a very downtrodden Iowa team that goes to the locker room. 17 to nothing. Low Miller with a 62-yard field goal. We'll be back with our halftime interview after this on Sports Vision. Welcome back to Minneapolis, where Hayden Fry and the Hawkeyes find themselves down 17 to nothing to start the second half. Minnesota will kick off. The Hawkeyes will receive Harmon and Smith deep for the Hawkeyes. No matter, they might as well not have anyone there because it is out of the end zone. And Iowa will take it first and 10 at the 20-yard line. Chip Lowmiller, the man who hit the 62-yard field goal, has got quite a leg. Oh, and he really put his foot into that one, sending the ball clear into the back of the, the Hawkeye end zone. We got a new quarterback in for the Hawkeyes. Mark Vlasic is in, the senior. Vlasic has been bothered by a shoulder injury. Did not play at all last week in Iowa's win over Purdue, but we'll start the second half, the Holsky. The 7 of 16, but with two interceptions in the first half. The pass goes to Mike Flagg, the big tight end for the Hawkeyes. So Hayden Fry shuffling quarterbacks as we begin the second half. Now you're seeing Vlasic in for two basic reasons. Number one, the Hawkeyes need some type of spark. Number two, he's got the experience, but he's going to come into a gopher team that is really fired up after the first quarter, and he's going to have to move the football. This was a great initial play on first down setting up a second and short. This is the thing that they didn't have in the first half. Second down and one from the 29. Rick Bayless may have crossed the 30 for the first down. Stacked up at the line of scrimmage. This Bobbick leading the charge for the Golden Gophers. But it is enough for the first down. Mark Vlasic very early into the season was the leading passer in the country, he just uh, injuries befell him and was replaced by Tom Paholsky, who, who did admirably. But Velasic really has not got the opportunity this season to show totally what he can do when he's healthy. Vlasic, 77 of 131. Eight touchdowns and four interceptions on the year. Thrown for over 1,000 yards for the Hawkeyes. He'll go to the air on first down. He's got Quinn early, wide open, beautiful catch at the 40-yard line, early, out of bounds, at the 34. So Vlasic sparking the Hawkeyes to start the second half. He's got the receivers, and they've got the routes that can really penetrate a goal for secondary. Vlasic, as he lines up here, just stops, delivers the ball. Watch the catch that Quinn Early makes. This is a great two-handed catch, and he catches it going full speed and actually turns it upfield for 10 extra yards. We talked about early on the, the ability of putting Quinn Early, Robert Smith, and Jim Morrow all in the lineup together. It really presents a lot of trouble for a go for secondary. First and 10 from the 35. Bayless and Bass in the back here. Rick Bayless picks up four or five yards down to the 31 yard line. Bruce Holmes making the stop. Rick Bayless had a great first half. He was just overshadowed by the running ability of the Gophers, but this is what the Hawkeyes need to take the initial uh, series and really start to move in the football. There you see Hayden Fry happy with the play selection thus far, but in a lot of cases when you switch, when you go to a quarterback substitution, it really does the job in igniting the whole offensive unit. Went early, wide right. Marl to the left, Lassick in trouble. He's looking for Bayless. Classic goes down hard. Joyner was the man in on the, the pursuit. The Gophers have really been putting pressure on the Hawkeyes all day. Vlasic lines up and just attempts to dump this ball off to Bayless. And there you see he got dumped by three Gopher defenders. But I think the Hawkeyes would be wise to run more screens or draw plays because the Gophers really are teeing off on the defensive line. And that really may set up some great situations for them. Third down and seven from the 31. Minnesota showing blitz. They're coming after Vlasic. And he has to get rid of the football. Vlasic is dropped by Deuce Bobbick. Back at the 45-yard line. Mark Deuce Bobbick, the senior from Fairbaugh, Minnesota. 
And Iowa will have to settle for a field goal. Rob Howland comes in. There you see number 47, Don Pollard, blitzing right up the middle. Rick Bayless picks him up, but Deuce Bobbick is left wide open as he rushes there. And there you see Jim Morrow, the only receiver anywhere near the ball. Rob Howard now and to try the field goal. It'll be a 49-yard attempt. It is long enough, and it is good. So the Hawkeyes finally get on the scoreboard after being blank in the first half. Minnesota 17, Iowa 3. Welcome back to the Metrodome. It is Minnesota 17, Iowa 3. Bob Healy along with Keith Chappelle. The Hawkeyes shut out in the first half, finally getting on the scoreboard. 49-yard attempt by Rob Houtland was good. Now Minnesota with their first possession of the second half. Marv Cook to kick off. Anderson takes it. Got some running room. Across the 25 to the 29-yard line. Now that was what the Hawkeyes needed on that initial series, driving the ball down with Mark Blastic, missing, mixing his plays up very well, and actually getting on the board. But now here comes phase two in the second half that the Hawkeyes are going to have to contain with, and that's containing Ricky Foggy and this gopher offense that really ran through them in the first half. Foggy was pretty good in the air as well, 6 of 10 for 77 yards. He was intercepted once. And nine rushes for 17 yards. And Thompson was, of course, a, a big part of that offense in the first half with 80 yards on 13 carries. Kevin Wilson, the fullback, picks up four or five yards. Brad Quast on the stop along with Joe Mott. Kevin Wilson is a senior out of Aurora, Illinois. Went to East High School and one of the the few seniors that are, are starting on this offensive unit. Carter checks in for the Golden Gophers. Second down and six from the 34. And it is Thompson, the second man through. And he just burst through that hole, found an opening, picked up five yards before anybody could touch him. Davis finally came up to make the stop. What an outstanding player, though. The freshman is going to be in the years to come in the Big Ten. He just takes this on a basic misdirection, and the Gopher offensive line is really opening up some gaping holes for the runners because he was five yards into Iowa secondary before he was initially being stopped by number 97 for the Hawkeyes. That's Moss. First to 10 for the 41. Kevin Wilson. Senior fullback from Aurora, Illinois. He is the man that opens up so many holes in that offense for Minnesota. Very, very good blocker, Kevin Wilson. Pickup of two, second down and eight from the 43. Ricky Foggy, Golden Gophers quarterback. Otto in motion. Foggy will turn it upfield. And stopped at the 49-yard line. George Davis was there. That's the thing that makes that gopher offensive attack so dangerous is the fact that with Ricky Foggy at quarterback, he forces the defensive players to commit. The Iowa secondary man had no option other than to take Delbert Thompson out of the play. And when he did, it low left a gaping hole open for Ricky Foggy to gain seven or eight yards. Foggy, a junior from Waterloo, South Carolina, 6'1", 185. All Big Ten honorable mention last year for Minnesota. Third down and two. And Foggy is stopped behind the line of scrimmage. Joe Mott, the junior from Endicott, New York, Burst through the line and grabbed Foggy by the legs and pulled him down. Minnesota has to give it up. Now, as you said, Iowa is doing the job on defense, getting that ball back for the offense. Right, and this is what Joe Mott and Bruce Gear on the defensive end position are going to have to do in the second half in an effort to contain 
that option play. He did a good job of wrapping Ricky Fogey up, not allowing him to pitch, and forcing him to eat the ball. Great turnover for the Hawkeyes, giving the Hawkeyes the ball back. Brent Herbell to punt from the 35-yard line. Marciano at the 10. Finds an opening. Marciano still on his feet. He may go. Only him and the kicker between them. Marciano breaks the field to the 30, the 20, the 10. Marciano for the score. Peter Marciano, 89 yards, and Iowa is back in this ballgame. Just like that, defense and specialty team. Watch Peter Marciano go down the sidelines here and pick up some blocks. Now, he, he after regaining his feet, he's going to get a convoy of players. There you see Ken Sims in front of him. You got Anthony Wright in front of him and Kerry Burt. Watch the block that Anthony Wright puts on to finish it off. We've got a gopher player injured down on the sidelines, but that's a great job by the Iowa specialty teams and a gutsy effort by Peter Marciano. Rob Howland straight through the middle of the uprights with the point after attempt and as quick as lightning, it is 17-10. Iowa now down by just a touchdown. We talked about how fast it could change and is definitely doing that for the Hawkeyes here in just six minutes. We don't know who the injured gopher is on the sidelines there. But it had to have been one of the return men caught in a difficult position on that return. Peter Marciano, another one of the talented Hawkeye freshmen, took over a uh, punt returning chores from Robert Smith when he was injured and performed so well as a freshman that he's earned that starting spot. Marciano. One of the smallest players, if not the smallest player on the Iowa team, 5'9", 165. He's a sophomore from Brockton, Massachusetts. And if that name Marciano is a familiar one to you, yes, he is related to Rocky Marciano, the great boxer. He is his nephew. Peter Marciano, the one thing that he's done all year long for the Hawkeyes is shown a lot of courage in returning a lot of these kicks chooses not to fair catch many a ball that he should fair catch and creates a lot of great opportunities for the Hawkeye return team but he picked up a, a host of, of blockers there key blocks we had one of the Gophers actually injured and there we see him on the return but watch him here now he's gotten realized he's got three Hawkeyes in front of him he does a good job of using them to blind him and then he picked up a terrific block here by Anthony Wright knocking out Brett Herbel, who was actually the punter for the score. And they talk about momentum. Well, he may have gotten up off that Minnesota bench and switched sides right now. Iowa is the team that is in control in the second half. 17-10. The Minnesota lead has been cut to seven after Iowa trailed 17 to nothing. Anderson once again across the 25 and stopped at the 26-yard line. The Hawkeyes now doing a lot of ta taunting. In the first half, it was the Gophers who were uh, a little aggressive. There we see Peter Marciano on the sidelines, and he may be the uh, smallest Hawkeye, not only on this team, but in a long time, being congratulated by Rob Houtland and Travis Watkins, two of his former teammates there. But the Gophers got to be a little concerned now. They've got to put something together here to contain this momentum that the Hawkeyes have built up. Minnesota will start at the 27-yard line, first to 10. Wilson and Thompson line up in the backfield. Foggy is looking to throw. He lets it fly, and it is in and out of the hands of Jason Bruce. Foggy as he sprinted to the right side of the field there had Bruce wide open in the Hawkeye zone he just couldn't see him and by the time he he was able to plant and fire the ball he threw it low but that's a play they may go back to because Jason Bruce was standing about on the 40 yard line just 
all alone. And I'm sure uh, the Hawkeye defense are going to make the corrections there. But it's forcing the, the Gophers into an odd situation because it's the first time they're going into a, a wide man formation. Second down and 10. Boggy with the pitch. And Thompson is cut down for a loss. Terry Burke. Brad Quas coming up to make the hit. One of Iowa's outstanding freshmen. Freshman linebacker. Well, now they do a good job of nullifying this play. Mott forces Foggy to pitch, but Kerry Burke does a good job against Jason Bruce in holding position there and forcing Thompson to turn in into the pressure. Brad Quas was coming laterally, but Kerry Burt allowed him the time to get over there, the penetration from the inside to catch up to Thompson. Third and 13, Minnesota sends two wide receivers to the left. Foggy in the pocket, throws, and it is complete. And it is good enough for the first down. Mel Anderson, the senior from Homestead, Pennsylvania, and he gets a standing O from some of the 65,000 plus here tonight at the Metrodome. Now this is a great play by Foggy because he's really trapped for a loss with nowhere to go. That's a great catch by Bill Anderson, catching it right off the ground. Because Foggy was really trapped with nowhere to go and finding Anderson running over the middle, sliding into second, it looks as if he hit him for a first down. Iowa shows blitz on first down. Kenny Sims coming from the left side. Iowa stacks up the run at the 41. Thompson once again. John Gutekunst with a little different demeanor here in the second half. He was out on the field late in the first half, urging his team on and squeezed out an extra three points with a 62-yard field goal. Now he finds himself with only a seven-point lead. 7.30 left in the third quarter. Second down and nine from the 41 for Ricky Foggy of Minnesota. Foggy going to the air again. Again, he finds Jason Bruce. Bruce was wide open that time in the seam. Foggy just lofted it out there. Pretty little touch pass. And now Minnesota is threatening. Now, these are odd formations for the, the Gophers. They're lining up three wide receivers, eliminating a tight end, and just beating the Iowa in the zone. Jason Bruce there catches that ball, and he's wide open. Anthony Wright finally making the tackle. But the Iowa defense here in the second half has really forced the Gophers out of the wishbone. But Foggy's showing great skill in being able to run a wide set formation with three receivers. Gary Couch checks in. Davenport, Iowa native. Getz is also in. He carries for a pickup of maybe two yards. This is the same type of formation that the Hawkeyes use when they line up three wide receivers, but they only use one back. The Gophers do it a little bit differently. They line up three split receivers, but they take away the tight end and keep Kevin uh, Kevin Wilson and Delbert Thompson in at running back. Aiden Fry in his eighth year as the Hawkeye coach. The Hawkeyes headed for their sixth straight bowl appearance. They'd like to go in with the win. Thompson's right tackle well, there is a flag down on the field might be holding against the Gophers and yeah, that indeed is the call that'll back him up John Gutekunst came here on the heels of Lou Holtz, Holtz left for Notre Dame, left his defensive coordinator here, and they have just turned the program around in just a couple of years. The, you never used to see a sellout at the Metrodome. Today, though, the attendance 65,018, which is a new dome record, the seventh largest crowd in Minnesota history. Football is back in Minnesota. After the penalty, it'll be first and 15. Now the ball is marked at the 41-yard line of Iowa. Ricky Foggy beckoning in a player. I don't think the, the Gophers have enough people on the field. 
show you the difference here in this third quarter that's taken. They may have to call timeout if they can't get somebody on the field quick enough. And Only there. seven seconds left on the 25-second clock, and Minnesota will not get the playoff. Foggy is livid. So the Gophers call timeout so they don't lose another five yards. We'll take a timeout as well. 5.50 left in the third quarter. Minnesota 17, Iowa 10. A sellout crowd at the Metrodome in Minneapolis, and they've got a ball game to watch. Minnesota by seven, 17 to 10. Second down and 17. The pitch is to Getz, and he's got a big hole. Getz across the 30, down to the 28-yard line. The Gophers pull out a trick play of their own. This don't know what this was lined up initially. It looks like this is to be a screen. There you see Bruce Gear just lining in on Foggy, and he just pitches the ball over to Goats there, who's got a, a lot of room. He should have turned this into more yards than he actually got because had he just taken it and started running, he has the entire left side of the Hawkeye field to run on. But as it is, it's still short of a first down. We've got a third and about four. And when you need four yards, who do you give it to? Thompson. And Thompson may have gotten enough. It depends on where they mark the football. It may not be. The official marking it from our vantage point behind the marker. Looks like they're marking it just a bit shy. Hayden Fry anxiously over there making sure that they mark it correctly. And they are just shy. Now you've got an interesting call if you're a gopher. Fourth and one. The ball at the 25-yard line. A field goal gives you a 10-point lead. But they're not going for a field goal. I think they're... So a big defensive play for the Hawkeyes. Fourth and one. Minnesota trying to go for it show you the difference a uh, half will make. Uh, Delbert Thompson up until that run had carried the ball six times and gained a total of six yards. The Iowa defense doing a good job in this third quarter at least containing him. But now you've got back to the wishbone. And Minnesota appears to have gotten the first down. Brad Foss coming up to make the stop. Hey, Fry knows that Hawkeyes can't really give up any more points. John Gutekunst knows it also. He wants some more points in that board. He has seen his 17-0 lead eroded to a seven-point lead. 444 left in the third quarter. First down, Minnesota. Go for so far two for two on fourth down conversion. But more importantly, they're keeping the ball away from the Hawkeye offense, who really put together two quick scores, one on offense and the other on special teams. Getz and Thompson line up in the eye. Foggy is going to go to the air. He's got plenty of time. Now we'll run with the ball himself. Still on his feet. Foggy is headed for the end zone. Foggy walks us all the way in for the score. Ricky Foggy appeared to be caught in about the 15 yard line but bounced it outside and just did it all himself this was a one-man show ricky foggy if i don't know how many times he appeared to be caught here how do you contain a man who can do so many different things let's count the times that he's hit there there's one time he's bouncing outside here that's carrie bird who misses him there and there the last tackle he's the only man left standing after that run well-deserved dance here and there Low Miller for the point after a tip. And it is good. So with 4.17 left in the third quarter, it is Minnesota 24 and Iowa 10. Foggy getting some congratulations on the sidelines. Some well-earned congratulations because he more or less did do it all on that play. The Hawkeyes have done a good job this third quarter containing Delbert Thompson, but this is 
this is where you really run into problems because if Daryl Townsend gets contained, you just unleash Rick, Ricky Foggy, and he's done a super job. Foggy has run the ball 13 times for 46 yards, and he has passed well also 9 of 14 for 130 yards showing a lot of versatility as well because the Hawkeye defense really forced the Gophers in, forced them out of that wishbone situation into a split back where they were running two split backs and lining up three wide receivers. But uh, the Gophers up to the challenge did some great throwing, hitting uh, Jason Bruce on a couple plays downfield, setting up Ricky Foggy's actual run for, some, for score. That was actually a 23-yard run by Ricky Foggy. And can you imagine all these players are going to be back next year? Ricky Foggy, Daryl Thompson. Look at the run here. There's Dave Haight. There's Davis. There's Gear. You're going to see Kerry Burt with a shot at him, showing you some speed there. And then finally, that's Crow. Finally, last person to try to get a shot at him. And there he is. Foggy just dances into the end zone. 4.17 left in the third quarter. 24 to 10 lead for the Golden Gophers. Lone Miller to kick off. Smith and Harmon are deep at the five yard line for Iowa. Harmon takes it at the five. Harmon still on his feet, crosses the 30 to the 33 yard line. So a 28 yard return by Kevin Harmon. Harmon showing one of the, the great Harmon trademarks, and that was a super move that he put, stopping at midstream there about at the 25 and reversing his field, picking up an extra 10 yards. We talked about great runners. We had the number one and number two runner going into this game in the Big Ten in Daryl Thompson and Rick Bayless, but if you had to vote on a runner, I'd put Ricky Foggy right up there, Foggy right up there with all of them. First and 10 from the 33-yard line. Mark Vlasic is still the quarterback for the Hawkeyes. Paholski with the whole first half, and now Vlasic has started the second half. Across the middle to Richard Bass. Bass can't hold on to the football, and it has hit hard at the 35-yard line. You never see a concern Hayden Fry on the sidelines because he's got to contain, uh, put together some plays, or the old momentum may be getting back up off the Hawkeye bench and moving back over to the Gopher sideline because they really did come back in prime fashion after the Hawkeyes scored 10 quick points in the first third quarter here. The Gophers answering with a drive of their own. Grant Goodman into the game at fullback for the Hawkeyes. Second down and 10. Vlasic will go to the air again. This time he finds Harmon at the 40. Harmon is trying to get outside. He gets the first down and more across the 50. And new Minnesota territory at the 48-yard line. Steve Franklin finally was the man to run him out of bounds, but not before Harmon picked up the first down for Iowa. Kevin Harmon's another person along with Mark Vlasic. Now, both these people were starters going into the year, and Harmon's a fine running back in his own right, but watch him catch this ball and turn on some speed here and getting around the sideline. Turned uh, an average five or six yard play into about 15, 20 yards. That looked like the Kevin Harmon of old that we had known. Classic play action pass. Robert Smith complete at the 35 yard line. Donovan Small coming up to make the hit. Iowa starting to move the football once again, which is something they have done today, but most of the time they have coughed the ball up. We'll see the fumble, an interception, yeah, they've given up the football. The important thing the Hawkeyes have done is they have, as you mentioned, they've moved the ball, but they've yet to put any points on the board offensively. They haven't been able to get the ball into the end zone. The only score coming thus far on a Pew Marciano punt return. First and 10 from the 34. Again, Vlasic is going to put it up. His receivers are covered in trouble. And the little pitch to Harmon somehow gets to him. Why did he throw that football <laughs> that way? I guess. <laughs> oh, why, I, why did not? Why did Mark Glassick try the pitch from there? Did he figure it was an easier, easier I, toss? I could not understand his rationale for doing that, other than it worked. Uh, 
caught Kevin Harmon so off guard that he was running the other way. Kevin Harmon was running five yards toward the gopher end zone before he realized that, hey, I got to turn this thing around and go back the other way. Harmon did a good job just getting the football. Second down and eight from the 32. Pick up of two yards. Mike Flagg is looking to throw the football. Quinn Early in the end zone. He is bumped. Early is bumped as he goes up for the ball. Charles McCree was the man in single coverage. Iowa with a little razzle-dazzle and big break for the Hawkeyes. They both went up for the football, but Quinn Early was bumped. We're seeing some very innovative plays here. This was a play-action pass to Flagg, who in turn throws the ball. Now watch McCleave as he goes up for the ball. The problem is that he's not looking at the ball as he goes up. You cannot, here we see it again on a reverse angle. McCleave is going up not to break the ball away, but just to get in the way of Quinn Early. The referee spotting it, calling it pass interference, and there we see the mark off. It will not be, it will not be go to the one yard line. They'll mark off the pass interference from there and give the Hawkeyes a first down. Illegal use of the hands. It will be first and 10 from the 17. There is two minutes, 19 seconds left in the third quarter from the Metrodome. Minnesota leads by two touchdowns, 24-14. Iowa threatening. Classic is in trouble, gets it off, and it is broken up. Bruce Holmes got a hand on the ball. Big defensive play. That was a great play by Holmes. Holmes, one of the seniors in uh, the Gopher defense. 6'3", 235. He did a great job of stepping in there, not being called for interference, but breaking up a pass by Velasic. Velasic is choosing to roll out as well in an effort to get away from the Gopher rush. Second down and 10. Iowa does not want to settle for a field goal. Classic is checking off. Remember the noise factor at the dome. And that may have been a broken play. Kevin Harmon didn't get the read. It's obvious that they wanted to go to a running play there. A miscue on the, the sidelines or on the audible between Vlasic and Harmon. Harmon didn't run the play that Vlasic assumed he was running, and that left Vlasic naked to hold the football, and you don't want that. Vlasic has been injury-ridden thus far this season, and if he starts bootlegging out there against this gopher defense, he may not finish the season. Third down and six from the 13. Minnesota comes up with the big defensive stop. Anthony Burke. The Hawkeyes are one of seven on third down plays this game. Having to settle for a Rob Hobbins field goal is not something they wanted to do there. That was just a, a shuttle. A shuttle pass to Kevin Harmon. The Gophers read it well and we're waiting right there on him. They may not get this play off as the clock continues to tick. Two, one. And Iowa now will back it up five yards. The 25 second clock goes off. Outland was about to attempt a 34 yarder. Now it will be a 39 yard attempt. 45 seconds left in the third quarter, and Hayden Fry, his look tells it all. Very concerned because the Iowa offense has been able to move, but they haven't been able to put any points on the board. If this field goal is complete, none of the points thus far will have been scored by the Iowa offense. Iowa, as I said, one of seven on key third down situations. 38-yard attempt by Houtland, and it is good. He had already hit a 49-yarder, now a 38-yarder. That is the only offense that Iowa has been able to muster except for an 89-yard kickoff return by Peter Marciano, punt return by Marciano. And now with 37 seconds left in the third quarter, Iowa has cut the lead 
to 24-13. And it is not over yet, still a full quarter to go. Yeah, we got a full quarter to go, but the one thing that, that Hayden Fry is really worried about is the offense's ability to score points. They're going to have to. The defense is, has been playing admirably well in attempting to attain, contain the Gopher offense, but the Gopher offense came into this game as the number one rushing offense in the, in the, the Big Ten and giving you a good indication why here. They're doing a super job of mixing their plays up, running and passing, but the Hawkeyes have moved the ball both under Paholski in the first half and now under Vlasic in the second half, but when it came time to, to convert on key situations, they just haven't been able to put it in the end zone. There's a floor level view of the Metrodome here. They also play baseball here, of course. The Minnesota Twins play here. They call it the Homer Dome when they play. Roselle Richardson is back deep for Minnesota. Marv Cook will kick off. Anderson also back. 37 seconds left in the third quarter. Minnesota on top by 11, 24 13. And it is out of bounds at the 16 yard line. So now Iowa will have to kick it again five yards back. That is one area of the game that was a concern for the Hawkeyes early in the year. The kicking game has been better, more consistent later in the year, though. It has been better, but the special teams for Hawkeye, the Iowa team have done a good job on, on covering a lot of these plays because they haven't been getting the booming kicks as we talked about. With the five-yard mark off, this is going to line the Hawkeyes up at the 30-yard line to kick this off, and it really sets up a situation for a great potential return and great field position for the Gophers. In case you're just joining us, it was Minnesota leading 17 to nothing at the half. Iowa came back and scored 10 quick points. But then the Gophers between, between, behind the 23-yard run by Ricky Foggy have bolted back out to a 24-13 lead. Cook to kick off once again. It is taken at the 15-yard line by Anderson. Anderson across the 30 to the 35. So Minnesota will take over with pretty good field possession. 30 seconds left in the third quarter. We talked about that option offense that the Gophers are choosing to run. The Iowa defensive ends are playing a lot better in this quarter and containing, uh, taking Daryl Thompson out of the play. But the thing that they've done is really open the way for Ricky Foggy to, to show his running capability. Here we're getting a good picture of the dome, the inner surface, uh, the ceiling there, actually inflated. First and 10 from the 35 for Minnesota. Thompson off left tackle, picks up one, maybe two yards. Bruce Gear in on the stop. Number 94 for the Hawkeyes. Pickup of two. That may be the last play of the third quarter. So after three quarters of play, Minnesota will begin the fourth quarter with a 24-13 lead over the University of Iowa. We'll be back with the final quarter right here on Sports Vision. Welcome back to the Metrodome in Minneapolis. Bob Healy along with Keith Chappelle for the final 15 minutes. Minnesota leads Iowa 24-13. Second down and seven for Ricky Foggy. He rolls right all the time in the world. And it is complete at the 40-yard line to Craig Otto, the tight end from Elk River, Minnesota. Pick up of four, maybe five yards. That man, though, has been to the key along with Daryl Thompson to this Minnesota offense today. They have moved the football on a very good Iowa defense. In fact, the number one defense against the rush in the conference. Well, Daryl Thompson, really, uh, if you show uh, the indication, the Iowa defense has done a good job of stiffening on him in the third quarter. I, 
He had seven carries for 11 yards total in the third quarter, but as we mentioned, that just opened up the way for Ricky Foggy to get in and do some things. This time, the pocket collapses on Ricky Foggy, and he goes down. Iowa putting some pressure on the junior quarterback. Myron Kepi, number 77, one of the men to get to him. Kepi, one of the Iowa players that filled in admirably during some key injuries to that defensive line. Originally a third-teamer was starting two or three games and a couple of outstanding games. Now remember, Iowa got his lone score on a punt return, and I think the, the gopher punt return team is well aware of that. Marciano ran one back 89 yards. This is a short kick. That will not be fielded. It takes an Iowa bounce. And they are going to mark it out of bounds at the 48-yard line. But there is a flag down. A flag down at about the 35. But it appears that a flag in that area may be offsides against Minnesota. Just a 20-yard punt. So John Gutekunst looking on the sideline. He's at midfield, doesn't like where Iowa has field position to start here. 13-32 left to play in the game. Iowa needs to put a few points on the board and do it quickly. They trail 24-13. Well, now, statistically, we don't, under, we don't have the official statistics, but I think uh, in terms of yardage gained, uh, this game has been pretty even. The only uh, point of concern is the actual score. The Gophers have been able to turn their opportunities into points the Hawkeyes haven't. Number 12 is Mark Vlasic. He started the second half at quarterback for the Hawkeyes after Tom Paholski, a redshirt freshman, with the first half. So far, Iowa has not been able to put the ball in the end zone except for the punt return by Marciano. Rick Bayless, the ball carrier. Rick Bayless going over 1,000 yards tonight for the Hawkeyes. Needed only 38 yards coming into the game. There's a look at Bruce Holmes calling the defensive signals. Big number 88. Senior from Detroit, Michigan for the Golden Gophers. Right now, Iowa is looking at second down and seven. The ball at midfield. Robert Smith lines up in the slot. Bayless is the lone back. The screen pass to Bayless, and it is read well by Minnesota. John Labyrinth came up and just buried Bayless right after he caught the football. This was a well-designed screen play. Uh, Vlasic does a good job of holding the ball to the last second, avoiding Odoms. But Labyrinth comes up from out of nowhere. Watch him just come and just level Bayless there. These players, as uh, the fourth quarter comes down, are getting more and more motivated. Big third down play for Iowa. Third down and eight. And now Vlasic will check off, giving hand signals to his receivers. The clock winding down, just about to go off, and Mark Vlasic calls timeout. And now we'll go over to the sideline to talk it over with the head hawk, Hayden Fry. Once a quarterback himself, quarterback the Baylor Bears. And that's the one thing he doesn't like is to, to waste costly timeouts in the situations here because as this game draws to a close, the Hawkeyes may need all their timeouts going in. But Vlasic, knowing he didn't have time to audible lies off, chose to take the smart route and call timeout. It was just a couple of weeks ago that Hayden Fry was asked at his press conference if he'd like to have a bowl bid locked up by the time he started this Minnesota game. And he said, yes, I'd like to have it in my back pocket. And maybe he knew very well that the Iowa team was not a healthy team and that uh, coming up here could very well uh, be uh, bad news for them. Uh, Iowa did win over Purdue, a weak Purdue team this year, and apparently that locked up a bid to the Holiday Bowl for them, importantly for Hayden Fry because he's trying to keep that string of bowl appearances alive now. Six straight bowl appearances the Hawkeyes have made. They've gone to the Rose Bowl, the Peach Bowl, the Gator Bowl, the Freedom Bowl. Again, the Big Ten champs last year, the Rose Bowl, and now apparently the Holiday Bowl this year. On the other hand, coming into this game, Minnesota is looking to go to their second straight bowl game. They went to the Independence Bowl last year and beat 
Clemson and Don Gutekunst's first game. This year, they are headed for the Liberty Bowl to take on Tennessee. Tennessee, a winner over Kentucky. Third down and eight. Classic across the middle to Jimmy Morrow. It's complete for the first down at the 33-yard line. Jimmy Morrow, the senior from Des Moines, Iowa. Classic after he fakes this ball to Bayless, knows that he's going tomorrow over the middle, but Morrow does a good job of catching the ball, looking right in the face of Bruce Holmes, knowing that Holmes is going to close in on him. He kept his concentration there, and that's been the mark of Jimmy Morrow all year long. He's been a great, skilled clutch receiver who can catch the, the deep ball, but also can come up with those clutch, clutch catches over the middle. 11.40 left to play. First and 10 for the 30. Three for Iowa. Deep drop by Vlasic. Marv Cook, the intended receiver, complete at the 19-yard line. Steve Franklin, number 40, along with Dwayne Dutrell were the men on the coverage, but nice catch by Cook. Hawkeyes are mixing up their plays well. This is just an outpay. Cook does a good job of catching it. Vlasic does a better job of putting the ball right there where he can do nothing but catch it. But the Hawkeyes have moved the ball. Now, see, the important thing here is that they get into the end zone because they've been down here and go for territory before, but they've always turned the ball over. Iowa needs two touchdowns. They cannot settle for a field goal. Again, Vlasic is checking off. Just three seconds left on the 25-second clock. He's got Bayless out of the backfield, and Bayless trying to bull his way into the end zone may have come up just short down to the one-yard line. Dwayne Dutrell stopped him from going into the end zone, but that was not Mark Velasic's primary receiver on that route. It really wasn't. He had Morrow in the end zone, but chose to just dump it off. Bayless does a good job of taking this ball. Watch him bear down here. That's Dutrell and a host of other gophers that deter him, but he puts this ball as close to the one-yard line as about you can get. Dutrell, Bayless just ran over Dutrell but the flow of the go for a defense just stopped in. Grant Goodman checks in. First and goal from the one-yard line for Iowa. And Bayless is stopped. Gang tackling by Minnesota at the line of scrimmage. And importantly, the clock continues to tick those precious seconds off the clock. 10.44 left to play. Both teams with two timeouts left. Marshall Cotton is in the backfield along with Richard Bass and Kevin Harmon. Second down and goal. And the play action fake up the middle. And Velasic finds Mike Flagg, the big tight end, for the score. Hayden Brock taking advantage of a very aggressive Minnesota defense. They collapse that middle, and flag is wide open. That's a great play action fake by not only Kevin Harmon, but Vlasic as well. Vlasic's statistics are really piling up here. Watch the fake. The fake draws everybody in. Dutrell is just standing there, and flag is wide open. Vlasic now is 10 out of 15 for 126 yards and one, tel one touchdown. Iowa has called timeout, 10.23 left, perhaps now a decision. Do you go for two points? With the extra point, it will be 24-20, but a field goal, if they go for two, then will tie the ball game. Right now, 24-19. It's a major discussion for the Hawkeyes. They've got to feel pretty good right now about moving the ball but actually getting it into the end zone they converted on a couple of key third down plays and they know they may not get down here this far again until late into the game so they've got to make use of what they do now but do you really lose anything if you go for the two points and do not get it you still need a touchdown to win anyway you still need a touchdown to win but emotionally you lose because if the gophers can prevent a two-point conversion here, and the Hawkeyes are going for it as Vlasic comes back out on the field, then it really 
attempts to shift the momentum the uh, Hawkeye go for defenses way but the Hawkeyes are going for it I think uh, what do you think uh, if I were play action pass play action you pass give yourself out. the option roll out using classic we've seen it many times before and without a back like David Hudson in the lineup a big bruiser you can count on for three or four yards you almost have to go to the air look to, to, to go to either Bayless or flag Goodman Cotton and Bayless in the backfield it's Goodman in motion Iowa going for two and the option to Bayless and he's not going to make it John Levernez along with Steve Thompson stopping Bayless as Iowa tried their own version of the option play. So Minnesota stops Iowa going for two with 10 23 left. Our score Minnesota 24, Iowa 19. 10 minutes 23 seconds left to play in the game. Iowa has cut Minnesota's lead to 24 19. Larry Joyner, one of the outside linebackers for Minnesota, was helped off the field, appeared to have an arm injury. Still plenty of time left for the Hawkeyes. The Hawkeye defense is really going to be put to the test now because the Gophers really have not been able to be contained by the Iowa defense at all coming into the game. Iowa's defense number one in the Big Ten Conference. Roselle Richardson and Mel Anderson back deep. It's Richardson across the 20. Puts his head down, picks up an extra three or four yards, and Minnesota will take over at the 26-yard line. So now, as you said, it is up to that Iowa defense to hold, and John Gutekunst knows he cannot sit on the football. Minnesota will have to move the ball. There we see Larry Joyner on the sidelines. Joyner was inadvertently hit by Richard Bass on that option play, and it seems as if he fell right on his shoulder. We don't know whether it was dislocated or exactly what happened. He's being attended to and that will be a, a big loss for the Gopher defense if he isn't able to return. Wilson and Thompson in the backfield. Boggy with the pick to Thompson. Thompson tries to turn the corner. Picks up a couple of yards possibly. You know, with, with a defense like uh, the Hawkeyes run, it's very opportunistic. Uh, Hawkeyes haven't come up with many big plays now, but as the top clock ticks under 10 minutes, this is prime time for the Iowa defense to really step up and do what they've done all season, and that's really close ball games for these Hawkeyes. Jason Bruce and Mel Anderson to the left. Boggy will stay on the ground. Again, it is Thompson. So Minnesota trying to eat up a little bit of that clock. 9.30 left to play, and Iowa has just one timeout left. Hawkeye defense has done a good job this second half of being able to contain Daryl Thompson, not allowing him the freedom to just pick up and run the way he did in the first half. Marcus Evans checks into the game for the Gophers, along with Mel Anderson to split in. He has been the big play man for them on third down. The Gophers need three for the first down. The ball at the 34. They need to get past the 37-yard line. Boggy goes to the air, and it is incomplete. Out of bounds. Pressure coming from that left side of the Hawkeyes. Rick Schmidt coming up from the safety spot with the blitz. Put the pressure on Boggy, and he had to throw it quickly. I was going to get it back. Hawkeye defense rising to the occasion here. Presenting another opportunity for that man, Petey Marciano. Herbo will punt from the 20. Marciano back at his 25-yard line. Eight fifty-one left to play in the Metrodome. Kenny Sims going after it, almost got a piece of it. Marciano takes it at the 28. Marciano's got an opening, and he crosses the 40 out to the 43-yard line. What an exciting player Pierre Marciano is. Finally ridden out of rounds by Greg Otto. But Herky now has something to cheer about. The Hawkeye fans who have traveled up here to Minneapolis now on their feet, giving the Hawkeyes a standing ovation, urging that 
Iowa offense on. Mark Lassick and company have plenty of time to work with. Eight minutes, 40 seconds left. They trail Minnesota 24 to 19, and they need to get it into the end zone. Well, they do, and the thing that they, they should go back to is really Mark Vlasic using his ability to hit receivers downfield, whether it be Morrow, Early, Flag, penetrating the gopher zone, because that is a weak spot, and they have been able, when Vlasic has had time, to really throw the ball in there. Thompson is at uh, 20 carries for 96 yards total, but at the end of the half, he had 80 yards. So in all that we've gone thus far in uh, the second half, he's gained but 16 yards against the Iowa defense, which has really done a good job of closing him off. Here we are in Minneapolis, Minnesota. Weather normally a big factor in these games, but uh, when you're playing in the dome, you don't know what the weather is outside. Eight minutes, 40 seconds left. Iowa begins their drive. First and 10 from the 42. And Richard Bass into Minnesota territory. Across the 50, down to the 48-yard line. Mark Deuce Bobbitt finally making the stop on Bass, and he limps off, may have caught a knee as he went off. Rick Bass subbing for the injured Dave Hudson. They were talks about this week us seeing Dave Hudson, but we've yet to see him. The Hawkeyes choosing to instead to rotate Richard Bass and Grant Goodman. Hudson, the big fullback from Waxahachie, Texas, has had more than his, his share of injuries this year, has played sparingly the last couple of games, making only token appearances. Hayden Fry deciding Apparently he may is not 100% but deciding to save him for that bowl game the Hawkeyes have. They could use him though now. Oh, they really could. Robert Smith, the speedster from Dallas, Texas, checks in number two for Iowa. 8.20 left. The clock continues to tick. Iowa just shy of the first down. Second down and one. Bass, the lone setback. Classic has got Mike Flagg complete at the 25-yard line. Minnesota trying to wrestle the ball loose from Flagg's hands, and he is not going to give it up. Mike Flagg is one of the Iowa receivers you don't want to mess with. 6'6", 224 from Cedar Falls, Iowa. This is what we talked about Iowa had done effectively was using... Vlasic throwing the ball downfield, hitting his big targets there, and the Gophers are just standing flag up and allowing different defenders an opportunity to take wax at him. I'm surprised the referees didn't step in there because they could have called a penalty there. That's not very sportsmanlike. <laughs> First and 10 from the 25. Bayless twisting, weaving, turning his way creating six or seven yards, something he has done all so well this year. Finally brought down by Bruce Holmes, but a pickup of eight yards for Rick Bayless. A record crowd tonight at the Metrodome, 65,018, and you can bet none of them have left. 7-12 left in the game. Iowa with just one timeout left. Robert Smith is split wide left, Quinn early to the right. Second and two. Bayless. For the first down. Bayless, to be the size he is, runs better inside than most players that you would expect to see his size, but he'll just go into a crowd and pop out five yards later downfield. In the second half, to give you an idea of how the momentum has shifted. Iowa's got 11 first downs in this half compared to Minnesota's four. First and 10, Iowa now at the Minnesota 12-yard line. And the crowd starts to become a factor, the noise factor. Straight at the middle, Richard Bass falls his way for two, possibly three yards. And now Iowa thinking they're getting within range to score, maybe thinking 
let's run the ball. Let's use a little time off the clock so Minnesota won't have a lot of time in case we do score. You got to remember that Larry Joyner, the the ring leader for that aisle, or uh, excuse me, that Gopher defense has been out. So they've got a substitution for him in there, and that's right where the Hawkeyes are running. Second and six from the eight. Iowa can get to the two-yard line for a first down. Classic for Quinn Early. And he is not into the end zone, just shy. Early wanted it badly. They will spot it inside the one-yard line. And that is a first down. Iowa will now have four shots at it. Bayless and Early do a good job of just connecting on this play. As he catches the ball, he's in the end zone, but the face of the ball is outside. And he looks at the officials. They're right there to mark it, but this puts the Hawkeyes in a first and goal situation on the one-yard line, and now all the pressure is shifting to the Gopher team. A touchdown and conversion puts the Hawkeyes up. Bass, Bayless, Goodman in the backfield. First and goal. Bayless goes over the top for the score. And Iowa has taken the lead. Rick Bayless has a homecoming of sorts back here in his home state. Goes right up and over the top for six points for the Hawkeyes. And this puts the Hawkeyes in front with less than six minutes left. And now if you're Hayden Fry, you go for two points again, apparently, leading by one. Two points makes a field goal just good enough for a tie. And so now Iowa apparently will use their last time out, the 25-second clock winding down. The, the Hawkeyes, Hawkeyes have done a poor job in terms of getting their, their, their play calling on the field. Hayden Fry, Carl Jackson, there you see a disgusted group there. They're not getting their plays in quick enough. And he's discussing with Quinn Early and Robert Smith that very same fact now. He's got to get them to get the play into the ball game to allow Vlasic time to call it, make any corrections that he's got to make, and get to the line of scrimmage. They haven't done that all game. It's cost them a, a couple of Delay of game penalties, but more importantly, it's cost them some timeouts. And there went Iowa's last one. And we still got a lot of time left, five minutes and 27 seconds. Bayless, with that carry, went over 77 yards total offense uh, rushing today. But this just has really just been another day at, at the office for Rick Bayless. Because as the game progresses, he just seems to chalk up more and more yardage. There you see some of the Iowa fans that have made the trek up here to Minneapolis. About a three, three and a half hour drive for a lot of them. They make a weekend out of it. They've had quite a ball game. Now Iowa going for two points, leading 25-24 with 5.27 left. They were stopped last time. This time, Classic going to the air and wide open. In the end zone, Kevin Harmon for the score, and Iowa takes a three-point lead. So with 5.27 left, it is Iowa 27, Minnesota 24. Richardson and Anderson back deep for the Gophers. 5.27 left, and now for the first time in the ballgame, they trail the University of Iowa. Iowa with their first lead, going for two points after the touchdown, 27-24. So now it is up to that Iowa defense to stop the Golden Gophers. Mark Vlasic has really come in and provided the Hawkeyes a spark they needed in just this half. He's 13 for 18 for 159 yards and one touchdown. Anderson at the five. Across the 20. The 25 out to the 28-yard line. Minnesota with two timeouts left, 5.20 on the clock. We'll start first and 10 from the 29-yard line. John Gutekunst, first-year head coach of the Gophers, sends Ricky Foggy in. 
He needs the points. We'll now see what the Gopher team is made of. They've had the lead and the momentum just about all game long. The Hawkeye team has continued to scratch back and now find themselves on top with less than six minutes left to go in the game. Wilson and Thompson line up in the eye behind Foggy. The pitch to Dale Thompson. And Thompson is cut down by Rick Schmidt. Just as Thompson tried to turn the corner, Schmidt came up from the safety spot and cut his legs down from under him. Pickup of two, that'll bring up second down and eight. The ball at the 31. And a concerned John Gutekunst looking up at the scoreboard. Now it is working against him. Well, the holes that Thompson used to have in the first half are gone because as, he, as he's taking these pitch outs now, he's got a pursuit coming in, and the Iowa secondary is doing a better job of meeting him head on. Foggy gets out of the grass for one Hawkeye and breaks across the 35 to the 37, but he has done that all day long, appeared to be down. He did it when he scored the touchdown, and once again appeared to be down behind the line of scrimmage but instead picks up six or seven yards, and now very slow getting up. Jeff Dross and Ricky Foggy has been going at this all game long. Here Jeff Dross is again, he's got him in full reach, but Foggy just breaks away and turns it into a great gainer for the Gophers. Now the Gophers are put into a situation that they haven't been able to convert on. Here we've got a third down and two. Minnesota is four of 12 in third down situations. Again, it is Wilson. And Thompson in the backfield. And it is Wilson picking up the first down. The ball shaking loose as Wilson picks up the first down. Now some tempers beginning to flare on the field. A lot of people thought that if you ever thought that they were going to take this game lightly, you see it here. Both of these teams are really going at it. That was a great play selection by the Gophers choosing to give the ball off to the lead man. And Wilson did a good job of getting it for first down yardage. Roselle Richards now checks into the Minnesota lineup. First and 10 from the 40. The pitch to Thompson. He turns the corner, picks up five or six yards for his stop. Not out of bounds, though. The clock continue to, continues to tick. 317, 316. Remember, Minnesota does have two timeouts left. Thompson is such a punishing runner. Watch as Foggy pitches this ball out. When he knows he's getting ready to get tackled, he lowers the shoulder and really takes on the initial tackle. That was bad cross there. Thompson, with that carry, just went over 100 yards for himself. 22 carries for 105 yards. Second down and three. And this time, Rick Schmidt reads it and reads it well. Schmidt, from that safety spot, neutralized Foggy, forced him to pitch it to Thompson, and then wrestled Thompson to the ground. Great defensive play by Rick Schmidt, the senior from Bellevue, Illinois. Now Anderson about to check in for the next play for the Gophers. 2.30 left to play. And the clock continues to tick. These third down conversions become very, very important. This is going to be a third and eight. Maybe the biggest one all evening for Minnesota. Third down and eight from their own 42-yard line. Foggy steps up into the pocket and is down. Joe Mott, Iowa's left defensive end. The junior from Endicott, New York, wrapped his arms around Foggy and forced him to the ground, so now it will be fourth and 10 for Minnesota. That's the third sack the Hawkeyes have given, and none more timely than this one is. Foggy steps up into the pocket. They do a good job of surrounding him. Mott just holds him up and allows Gear and Hate an opportunity to get under his feet and pull him down. And now Minnesota takes one of their timeouts. They still have one timeout left. The best of the NBA and NHL play right here on Sports Vision. Catch Michael Jordan's fabulous act in nearly 40 exclusive games on Sports Vision. The Chicago Bulls have a new coach and a new attack to bounce back in the Midwest Division. 
Also, don't miss a face-off as the Chicago Blackhawks do battle in almost 40 live telecasts. The only station you can see Blackhawk hockey on is Sports Vision. So catch a live wire with cable's hottest channel, Sports Vision. This is going to be the most crucial play of the game for the Gophers. We got less than two minutes left. A fourth down and ten to go. Ball on the 40-yard line. The Hawkeye defense has done a great job this second half of really neutralizing Daryl Thompson's ability to get wide on him. And now they're beginning to collapse on Ricky Foggy. Minnesota's two of two and converting fourth down or fourth down plays, but this is going to be the biggest one they've got all game right here. Fourth and ten. 147 left. Foggy to the air, and it's complete. Mel Anderson comes up with a big play for the Gophers. Credit to Ricky Foggy again for staying calm and cool as he rolls out there. You see Jeff Dross right on it, but he throws this ball pitcher perfect into Mel Anderson. Dwight Sistrung finally coming up to make the tackle, but that was the biggest conversion they've had. Rewinds the clock. The clock begins to tick again. Remember, Low Miller has kicked a 62-yarder today, so he is in range now almost. Boggy again to the air. And the sideline route is complete again to Anderson. And that stops the clock with 125 left. Minnesota with one timeout left. If you're Minnesota, though, I'm more than sure they're going for a touchdown. They don't want to tie. They want to win this game. Greg Otto checks into the ball game. Also, Jason Bruce. First and 10 from the 32-yard line of Iowa. 125 left in the game. Iowa leads 27-24. Foggy looking for the little screen pass, just decides to throw it out of bounds. Didn't develop. Good pursuit and penetration by the Iowa defense. Foggy there again, showing the poise that he's got. Has developed after three years in the Big Ten. Not seeing a play develop. He wanted to go to Daryl Thompson there. But seeing that Thompson was well covered, he chose to just lift the ball far out of the range of anybody and preserve a second down. Foggy statistics now have reached 12 for 19, 12 out of 19, 162 yards. And he's thrown three or four balls away purposely. Gary Couch now checks in at wide receiver. Mel Anderson splits wide to the left, second down and 10. And now Minnesota is forced to use their final timeout. Ricky Foggy shaking his head in disgust. The 25 second clock about to go off. You see by his actions, holding his hands up, walking over to John Gutekunst on the sidelines. He knows they needed that timeout badly to get that field goal team on. Now it forces him to almost use it down, throw the ball away just to get the kicking unit back on the field if they need a field goal. I cannot understand that play there because that really took the Gophers out of a super field situation even if they had to just throw a uh, run a play now they've got no time off left the Hawkeyes have the advantages if they can keep the play inbound the clock will continue to tick and given the fact that they may have to settle for a field goal if the Hawkeyes can do a good job of downing the, the ball and keeping the ball inside the playing field Low Miller may not have an opportunity to get onto the field One nineteen left to play. Iowa 27, Minnesota 24. Now Minnesota upset second-ranked Michigan in a similar situation like this last week. But Iowa, if you recall, uh, against Michigan State a couple of early on in their season came away with a, a, a win in Spartan Stadium under a similar situation. The Spartans had the ball on the, the Hawkeye two-yard line. And... 
Urema elected to throw it, and Kenny Sims came up with a big interception, and I, I'm sure that's what the Iowa defensive players are thinking right now. Second down and 10. The ball at the Iowa 32-yard line. Minnesota with no timeouts left. Foggy looking to the sideline route, going for it all. And it is incomplete. Jason Bruce, the intended receiver, Kenny Sims. Rick Schmidt right there with the coverage. So Minnesota going for it all. Now just six seconds gone on the clock. Jason Bruce had the position on Schmidt. He turned the wrong way and put himself in an awkward situation coming down. Now we got a third down. That's the other thing we've got to be concerned with. A third and 10 from the 32-yard line. Well, Minnesota apparently feeling that they're going to go for seven points. If they don't get it, it stops the clock, not wanting to risk a pass inbounds. Plenty of time, though. 113 left. Foggy looking at the sideline again and just throws it away. So once again, apparently it will be Chip Lowmiller. Fourth and 10 from the 32. Low Miller has already hit a 62-yard attempt. It was Low Miller's field goal with time running out that beat Michigan, handing them their first loss of the season last week. Now remember, Low Miller ended the first half with a 62-yard field goal. This will be about a 49-yard attempt. But the situation is different. This is to tie the football game. Low Miller had no pressure on him on the, the one before. And it is strong enough and good. So with 103 left to play, Chip Low Miller hits a 49-yard field goal to tie the game at 27 all. We've had a super ball game that's going down to the wire as we watch the replay on Low Miller. The thing that he does is he keeps excellent con concentration. Watch his reaction. He knew it was good right after he kicked it. But now you've got a tie ball game with a minute left. No timeouts on either side. If you're the Hawkeyes, you've got to go for the win. But at the same time, you, you realize when you risk throwing the ball, the Gophers could come up with a big play and turn it around. The Hawkeyes, do they have their return team in? This is going to be uh, important to see. Whether they actually put their return team in or they put in their good hands people, the people that they feel should be in an effort for a squib kick or onside kick. Really can't tell right now. Robert Smith is lined up by himself now at the 16-yard line. That's our time left, 103. Hayden Fry discussing the final series with fifth-year senior Mark Vlasic. For a long time, he played in the shadow, shadow of Chuck Long. Now has gotten his shot this year. Has been hampered by some injuries and really has had a phenomenal year considering all those injuries. Hawkeyes have their onside kick team in. Robert Smith, the lone return man, but everybody's inside the 45 to 50 yard line as they anticipate a squib kick. Minnesota booms it deep into the end zone, so Iowa will have to move the ball at least 40 yards to get into field position, possibly longer. Well, now, with this much time left, you actually can, can if you're the Hawkeyes, go over the middle. I think what you're going to see is quite possibly an, uh, the Hawkeyes... Ten seconds left. Houtland has been trying to get on the field the last two or three plays. He's ready to kick it now. But ten seconds left, they're going to let him give it a shot here. Rob Hatlin attempting a 51-yard attempt. His longest of the year has been 46 yards. Remember, there is no wind in the Metrodome. Hatlin has it. It's long Good. enough. 
and it is no good. He had the distance, but it was no good. Now remember, we've got five seconds left on the board now, and the ball's on the 34-yard line. How's that old saying go? It's not over till it's not over. Not over till it's over. Now you got an official call against and the goal against Minnesota, which is going to move Iowa closer to the goal. And now oh, the whole Iowa sideline jumping up and down. Oh, oh, They're going kidding. to get another shot. Now the last one was long enough. It was just wide. As they mark this call off, it's going to be a five-yard penalty. Unbelievable. Rob Hotland has new life. No, it's a 10-yard penalty. Oh, you're kidding me. 15-yard 15 15 penalty, yard penalty? Against Minnesota. Now what was... Oh. A 51-yard attempt now becomes... A 36-yard <laughs> attempt. There's the call. Rob Howland has got a second chance. Five seconds left. This may very well be the last play of the game. 27-yard attempt. Howland has it. It's good. And it is there. Still, one second left on the clock. You can tell who the Iowa fans are and who the Minnesota fans are by that last shot. Hayden Fry and his team jumping out onto the field to congratulate Rob Howland, John Gittekunst and team shocked by the penalty and field goal. There is still one second left on the clock. There you see Floyd of Rosedale being moved over to the Hawkeye side. And if the Hawkeyes win this, it means a lot more than any bronze pig. This was a great turnaround effort by this Iowa team that went into halftime down 17-0 to put 30 points on the board in the second half against the Gopher team that has been playing as hard as they've been playing. Here again, we're going to see a replay of the field goal. There is no question. It's straight through. Hadlin knew it as soon as he kicked it. Here you see Hayden Fry's response. <laughs> the old coach liked that one, didn't he? <laughs> Not much for emotion. <laughs> There's Sheriff Hughes on the sidelines. He gets a hug from the coach. And there you see the other side of it. A very, very solemn go for sideline there. Ricky Foggy playing superbly as usual. He had an outstanding game for the Gophers but not quite enough. And now if, you, if you're Iowa with one second left, do you even give Minnesota a chance to return the football, or do you just kick it short and let them fall on it and let the clock run out? You, sh you kick it as a sweep kick to the biggest, fattest lineman the Gophers have got. <laughs> <laughs> That's what you do now. Let him fall on it. <laughs> let him fall on it. What an end to the regular season for the Hawkeyes. And the people at the Holiday Bowl have to be smiling right now. They were looking at an Iowa team that could have lost three out of their last four games heading into the game. And now Minnesota tries a little lateral Great. action. The ball is still loose. Oh. What is it? <laughs> and finally knocked out of bounds. Oh, Minnesota good. with the last ditch effort, but that is the end of the game in an amazing comeback. What a way to end the season. Iowa coming back from a 17-0 deficit at the half to win it on a last-second field goal by Rob Hotland, 30-17. And the bronze pig, Florida Rosedale, stays at the University of Iowa. We'll be back to wrap it up in a minute. Welcome back to the Metrodome in Minneapolis where Iowa has come from behind to beat Minnesota 30 to 17. The man of the hour, Rob Howland with the last second field goal to win it. 
new life for Howland. He had missed a 51-yarder, yet a penalty by Minnesota at the most critical time of the game moved Iowa 15 yards closer. Howland didn't miss a second time. Oh, he really didn't. And you've got to credit the Iowa offensive team for really coming back here in the second half. Mark Vlasic subbing for Tom Paholski had a phenomenal game. He ending up unofficially with 15 uh, completions out of 19 tries, 189 yards. But he was really the spark that provided the Iowa team uh, the offensive boost they needed in the second half. There again, the Iowa defense came away. Uh, Daryl Thompson and uh, Ricky Foggy had done a great job in the first half. The Iowa defense collapsed on them, not allowing them the opportunity that they had. And it was just all in out a, a great team effort. Both teams headed for bowl games now. The Hawkeyes ready to accept an invitation to the Holiday Bowl. And what a lift it has to be for them to come back like they had. Now, after losing a couple games at the end of the season, they will go in head into that Holiday Bowl with uh, fond memories of the 86 season. Well, now, they knew this game here in Minneapolis would be very important. That's why Hayden Price talked about he wanted uh, a bowl bid locked up before walking in here because he knew these Gophers played tough, but his team was equally worthy to the challenge, and they've got to be very, very proud of the team back in Iowa City today. The Hawkeyes go to 8-3 and three overall, 5-3 and three in the Big Ten. Minnesota falls to six and five five and three in the conference third place goes to the hawkeyes once again final score 30 27 we'll be back to wrap things up in just a minute you're watching hawkeye football on sports vision welcome back to the metrodome in minneapolis this was the game winner for the hawkeyes rob howland you can tell by the reaction that it was good. The Hawkeyes are headed west now for the Holiday Bowl. <laughs> there you see the other side of it. Coach Hayden Fry elated. His team had a courageous comeback. It was a team effort. And the Hawkeyes have got to be very, very proud of not only Rob Howland, but every one of the players. There we see the collection of Floyd of Rosedale coming back to Iowa City. Once again, the final score, it was Iowa 30. Minnesota 27. We'd like to thank everybody who has been watching us here across the Sports Vision Network. We've enjoyed bringing you the game. The executive producer of Iowa Hawkeyes football is Jim Corno. This game was produced by Chuck Lutz. Our director has been David Wright for Sports Vision. The coordinating producer is John Tuey. His production assistant is Tim Sutton. Remote production services have been provided by KWWL. So for Keith Chappelle, this is Bob Healy saying so long. Thank you for joining us from the Metrodome. Once again, Iowa comes from behind to win 30 to 27. The proceeding has been an exclusive Sports Vision presentation. It was not a dream. John Campbell says the author of the game script had a change of heart and added a second ending. Rob Houtland did not feel like a hero when he missed a 51-yard field goal at game's end, but that was just part of this story's rough draft. The plot had the Gophers stuffing Iowa down a 17-0 halftime hole before the coach changed his strategy. Well, the first thing I did, I put up those damn clear glasses and got my shades out. <laughs> he also inserted quarterback Mark Vlasic into the lineup. I knew I could do it. I knew the offense could do it. It was just a matter of going out and getting it done, and we did that. The doing started early in the third quarter on a Rob Hotland field goal, and this 89-yard punt return for a touchdown by Peter Marciano. Everybody throw a good block, and when you throw good blocks, I'll, I'll break them. Early in the third, Vlasic had the Gophers in a pickle with this toss to Mike Flagg, 24-19. Next series, Rick Bayless, who went over the 1,000-yard mark, scores to give Iowa a 27-24 lead. The Gophers tied it on a low Miller field goal, but the field goal that counted belonged to Rob Houtland. You see, in the final draft, Minnesota was penalized for having too many men on the field, and Houtland got a second chance. Yeah, I, I, I hit it good. The first one I hit pretty good. Ah! The first one I hit pretty good, but the second one I hit, I just nailed it. The end. John Campbell, TV9 Eyewitness Sports. Jeff Dross brought home the bacon. That was Dross carrying the Floyd of Rosedale trophy. Exciting style Saturday night in Minneapolis, but for the real wrap-up, we turn it over to three guys last seen tiptoeing across the top of the Humphrey Dome trying to get a look at the Gopher Dirty Dozen. It's the Invisible Band. 
the Gophers were home. It was a record crowd at the Metrodome. In the first half, Minnesota's hits and pass defense gave the Hawkeyes fits. Daryl Thompson made the home crowd glad. For a freshman, this kid's not bad. And when the half was almost through, Low Miller scored three from 62. After the half, the Hawks came out smoking and showed Minnesota that we weren't joking. With Vlasic back to take control, we drew first blood with a field goal. When the Hawks' defense made the Gophers stall, they were forced to put the ball. Marciano hauled it in and then took flight. He was escorted in by Sims and Wright. Go, Peter! run two. He scored from 23 before he was through, but when the Gopher defense started to sag, Vlasic threw a short scoring pass to flag. Shortly thereafter, we took the lead. It was Bayless showing his power and speed, but when Low Miller tied the score, the Hawks needed a miracle. Nothing more. Vlasic moved the team on the game's last drive, but the long field goal sailed wide. But the Gophers defended with too many men, and Howland got to kick again. We knew Howland would not fail. He brought home the bacon, Floyd of Rosedale. The Hawks need a rest after Saturday, so now it's time for their holiday.